Is it time? It's time. I think it's about time. Looks like we're recording and live. Hey, everybody. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Okay. I'm Nolan Harshaw. I am a planner, too, for the city of Columbus, and I am going to be the host of your meeting this evening. Um, any issues, uh, technical issues, feel free to send that to me in the WebEx chat. Um, at the very bottom right hand of the screen. Just a few things to go over before the meeting starts. Um, please uh, make sure that you are muted upon uh, entering the chat room or the room. The chair will call on participants to speak. Um, if you do have questions, you can send those, like I said before, uh, via WebEx chat to me, the host, Nolan Harshaw. Uh, you will be required to have your video feature on if you are speaking. And this meeting is currently being recorded uh, and live streamed to YouTube as well. Um, to access any meeting materials, go to the following link here. And any comments that you do chat to me um, will not be part of the official record. So we are about to officially begin. So any speakers, um, everyone except for staff and uh, commissioners, go ahead and turn off your video and you can go ahead and mute yourselves at this time. Uh, speaker slips are required to be submitted no later than two hours prior to a virtual meeting. Um, if you've not already received confirmation on your speaker slip, you will not be called on to speak during the meeting. So you can also see how to participate at this link here. And last but not least, the order of speaking. Um, city staff will present the application materials. The applicant will be sworn in and asked to present any additional materials. Registered speakers will be sworn in and provided three minutes to speak each. And last but not least, commissioners will discuss the case and ask of questions uh, and ask questions if needed. Um, last but not least, just be aware of your mute button. I may have to mute you during the meeting if I'm getting some feedback or background noise. Take no offense to that. Just be aware that if you are speaking, you may be on mute before you start. So just be aware of that. Um, I think that's it. I'm going to hand it back over to Jacqueline. Great. Thank you, Nolan. And I'll bring up the agenda. And for Commissioner Harkey, whenever you want to get started, I think we're ready to go. Fantastic. This is the German Village, German Village Commission uh, hearing for Tuesday, June 1st, 2021. It is 4.03 p.m. And we are live on the virtual hearing. The next com yes. next commission monthly business business meeting uh, will be twelve noon on Tuesday, June twenty second, two thousand twenty one, uh, scheduled to be by the Webex. And the next commission hearing will be four p.m. Tuesday, July sixth, two thousand twenty one, uh, meeting again by the Webex. We'll move on to swearing in of staff. So, if staff, would please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do, Jacqueline Lehman, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Run down the list of commissioners present. Uh, Commissioner Panzer. Present. Commissioner Durst. Present. Commissioner Thiel. Present. Commissioner Ferriel. I'm here. Uh, Commissioner McCoy. Present. And Commissioner Foley. Present. I'm Anthony Hartke, the chair, present as well. Uh, we'll move on to the minutes from Tuesday, May 4th, 2021. Your motion on the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I um, move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you very much. Any questions on the motion? Uh, if there are no objections, there are no objections, we will approve the minutes. All right, I will move on to items of public forum. Jacqueline, any items of public forum? No items of public forum. All right, then we'll move on to the staff approval list. Those staff approval items begin on page uh, six of the agenda. Uh, 
Any recusals from anybody on the commission? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself from uh, 618 Mohawk Street, GV 2106003. First, I need to recuse myself from 369 Jackson Street, which is GV 21-06-029. <laughs> There are no more accusals. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move to ratify the staff approvals. Second. Questions on the motion? All right. If there are no objections, hearing none, motion passes. All right. We'll move on to the staff recommended, recommended applications, of which we have one. And that's going to be GV-21-06-043, 130 South, sorry, 130 East Cotha Street. Jacqueline? Okay, so this application is proposing to remove a concrete slab parking spot and replace with brick to match the existing brick. The applicant like to remove one section of the existing wood fence, which would be the west section, and install an iron gate and pedestrian walking gate. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked to confirm that the drawing on the fourth page of the application is what is proposed and noted that a less ornamental design uh, would be better. The commission asked what direction the gate will swing as swinging into the sidewalk area and blocking the sidewalk could be an issue. And whether there's an, the commission also asked whether there's a gate operator anticipated for a mechanical gate and asked if the gate will be on or within the property line as the commission wants to avoid any issues with putting a post on a neighbor's property. So staff recommends approval of the application with conditions that the gate is simple in style. And this is based on the standards of alteration and the standards of site improvements with the which the application is generally consistent with. All right, and do we have an applicant here for this application? Yep, I'm here. Can you hear me? All right, I see you. Please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Please state your name for the record. Ann Lutfring. All righty. Do you have anything else to add? No, um, that's it. Although we did inquire, so we talked to our gate folks about the direction of the swing, and they did say it could swing both ways. Um, we're considering um, and a kind of adding an automation system, but I don't think that we're going to do it right now, and I do understand that it should swing inside if we do choose to do that. Um, we actually... Uh, in regards to the property line, there is an encroachment um, on that neighboring garage area, and we've talked to our neighbors about it, and we have, they're totally fine with it. We maintain that area currently anyway, um, so we did get verbal approval from them. Um, they're very comfortable with the plans. All right. All right. Any questions, comments from the commission? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I've got a question. The the proposal from sorry from Kenny Landscaping talks about implementing a charcoal gray paver patio. So there is a note on that PDF. Sorry, a comment um, from us. That's just a typo from from our our planned contractor that we weren't able to get edited. So I think if you read the description, it's brick. The plan is brick. It's all just placing brick in to match the existing brick. There's no gray, gray stone involved. Okay. And and in fact, I just did open that um, that comment from you and that's exactly what it says, which is good. Now regarding the, the, uh, also the style, the, the decorative pieces, um, is that something you want to maintain here or are you willing to look at something a little more simple? What are your thoughts? We can certainly look at something more simple. It was actually kind of a, it, we weren't sure that we were going to add all those details anyway. So um, I guess if I can get just a bit more clear, is it the scroll work specifically that we're having an issue with? If I can get a concrete concept of what you'd like to see removed or changed, we can certainly get an additional mock-up. 
basically the, the the top portion well on the screen on the right which is the top of the fence that decorative scroll work typically would not see that and the two diagonals that had the scroll work on the end and that's typically wouldn't see that either okay uh, the 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 guiding principle is basically it should be simple in design and not draw attention away from the, the primary structure okay yep we can absolutely we can keep the diagonals though right just remove the scrolls yep. yes any other questions, comments from the commission? There are none. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, on, let me get the number here. Item 01 GD 2106 30 East Casa Street, I move to approve as amended. Removal Second. of the scroll work on both the diagonals on the top of the gate. Second by Commissioner Foley. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? You just dropped off, it looked like. Like, I yep. don't know what happened. All right. Uh, Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. All right. Uh, staff, if you see Commissioner McCoy pop back on, just give me a heads up and let me know. Sure. I'll keep an eye out. All right. Moving on to. Item two of the agenda, GV-21-05-032, 610 South Pearl Street. We have an applicant for 610 South Pearl. So this is Shmiel. Can you see me? Sorry. I, I hear you. I'm looking. There. I see your, your, your name. Let's see. Sorry, I'm traveling from video show up there i'm on the pennsylvania turnpike so <laughs> there we go sorry well, be safe sorry driving you, you please raise your right hand carefully do you swear to tell the truth <laughs> the whole truth and nothing but the truth i do ma'am please state your name for the record stephanie schmiel thank you very much Ms. Schmiel. all right jacqueline okay here we go Okay, so this application is proposing a new gas lantern, and this is a continued application. The applicant would like to replace the existing electric light fixture on the side of the house, and noting that the work will be done by man plumbing. The applicant notes that the installation is to be either through mortar or, if possible, a hole from the existing lamp. So at the May business meeting, the applicant, or there was some feedback, so the applicant has submitted some fixture options in response to that feedback. The commission noted that the fixtures appear to be closer in style to others around the neighborhood and less top heavy. And they had asked for clarification on which fixtures were being proposed and confirmation regarding the height. The applicant has submitted the more specific uh, cut sheet that is relevant to what they would like to propose, which I believe also has dimensions on that cut sheet. So staff does recommend approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff for review prior to issuance of a certificate. And that is based on the standards for alteration numbers three, nine, and twelve. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, anything else to add from the applicant? Um, no, I, we would go with the copper color this time, not the black. So I think it has more material, um, which is a bit of the feedback that we got, and it would be one of the, the smaller size. Um, I'm apologies for not having um, specified that, and I realized after the fact that it had the whole slew of them at the bottom on the PDFs. Um, the preference would be for the Luna, which is, I think, the first one, um, with the second being the Highland. And it's the smaller size of them, not the big. Yep. All right. Any questions, comments from the commission? See some folks staring intently. 
I'm I'm looking for the the fixture names and having trouble. I mean, I'm seeing Highland. Yeah, Luna. Sh Luna should be the very first page. Um, I think it was the first PDF that was submitted. Um, it's a little wider and has a full copper backing. Yeah, that one I believe. Okay, I, for some reason that comes through. Uh, if you look at the top of the sheet, it says Highland. That's oh. what is confusing me a little bit. That's fine. Okay. All right. Any comments or concerns? I will motion to approve GV2105032 for approval. Second. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. And the chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to item number three which is GV-21-05-038-204 Jackson Street. And we have Ms. Barnes. I yes, see you, please. John, can you see me? John Barnes. I'm looking for you, Mr. Barnes. Can you see me? No. No? Nope. I think Hold it's on. a low bandwidth. See your name. On. Yeah, it's got the little, uh, it's got the little caution yeah, thing in the back corner, like really? this to the bandwidth. Yeah. yeah. It says I'm connected, but we can hear you. We just can't see you. Really? Damn. Okay. Let me stop my video and start again. No? Uh, not yet. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> Well, I think we can. Uh, you want me to uh, hop off and hop back on real quick? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, we can begin with this if you'd like. We can swear yeah, in fine. Jenny and get going if you'd like. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. All right, Ms. Barnes, please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes. And please state your name for the record. Jenny Crotus Barnes. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? Okay, so this is another continued application. Uh, the application is proposing to modify an existing east roof dormer in a one and a half story, 100 square foot second floor addition above the existing one floor addition with a west facing dormer and skylight. The new wall cladding would be horizontal wood siding with wood trim and new roofing to be dimensional shingles. New windows would be double hung and there'd be removal of the existing wood picket fence. So this application was continued from the May 4th hearing and the commission feedback from that meeting included that the addition roof should not match the historic roof to follow guidelines, that roofs should not be extended from the historic structure. And some commissioners noted that they were okay with the roof stepping up due to the small cottage and clearer visual offset and suggested a pop-up of six inches uh, for that addition rather than a connector and covering the small lot with the addition roof slightly higher than the historic roof rake board. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked if the chimney is still functional in case it may be considered too close to the roof, noting that if the chimney is used for exhaust, the applicant may need to look at the proximity of dormers due to the narrowness of the home for code purposes. And although the German village guidelines recommend addition roofs be lower than the height of the historic building, a slightly higher height may be appropriate for this property due to the low height of the historic building, the lot size and lot location, as well as the size of the proposed addition and utilization of the existing addition and footprint. Uh, so staff recommends that the, any reasons or background for any exceptions to the guideline recommendations be aligned in the approval. And staff does recommend approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, prior for prior for issuance of a certificate. This is based on standards of alteration number 12. Thank you, Jacqueline. I see Mr. Barnes, we got your video. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Jonathan Barnes. Thank you very much. All right, so Jacqueline's read out the application. Uh, applicant, have anything else to add? 
Um, no, not really. I mean, you can cycle through if you haven't um, the images. They they're pretty similar, with the exceptions of the as, um, as mentioned. Uh, we've included for your information. I think on the last page, uh, construction section of that detail, just showing what we're trying to accomplish. I mean, the idea here was to give it enough room so that we could a build it and b maintain it. So we've got about a. Uh, 18 inches of offset um, one roof to the other, which we feel is enough to um, ensure proper performance uh, with, you know, uh, weathering with rain, with snow load, et cetera. That seems to be sort of about right to us. Questions, comments from the commission? So is that chimney still functional? No, I, I mean, it was obviously at one point, but um, it doesn't do anything. Uh, uh, the other, the one towards the south is functional only for a um, furnace flue. So the furnace flue goes up that one. The other one doesn't function at all. Any other questions or comments from the commission? I would just say I think Jonathan did everything we asked him to. I think we need to uh, mention for the record uh, staff report uh, requested uh, some explanation about the roof being higher as opposed to lower. Uh, that stems from the fact that basically the, 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 pro the lot is pretty much maxed out uh, footprint wise. Uh, trying to put that roof lower uh, is going to create other problems that are um, with constructability as well as usability. Uh, and due to the location of this addition, the small size of the addition, uh, and how far back it is set, uh, the visual impact has been minimized by keeping it low uh, above the original um, roof line. So, mitigating circumstances allow that to happen. And he also maintained the footprint, not not adding any footprint. All right, if there are no further questions, is there a motion? Oh, Mr. Chairman, on item 3, GB 2105038204 Jackson Street, I move to approve as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Bye. Right. Move on to item number four, uh, which is GV-21-05-039-1122 South Pearl Street. I believe I see Dr. Could go on there. If you please raise your right hand, sir. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And please take your name for the record. Dr. Brian Kuditko. We also have Thank my you. architect. All Dean right. Bella. Mr. Belba, please raise your right hand. You yes, swear sir. to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Eugene Belba, architect. All right, Jacqueline. Uh, so this application is proposing to replace all historic windows with new pillow windows from the approved windows list. They're also proposing new construction with that construction being to construct a new one and a half uh, car, one story detached garage at the rear of the lot. Uh, the applicant would like to excavate and construct a new asphalt drive turnaround and concrete curb from street to new garage. And the evidence of an old, cur old curb cut is visible and an old photo shows that original curb ramp. For some reason, I don't think my staff report made it in here, um, but I do recall the commission asking for an arborist report, which the applicant has submitted. The applicant has also submitted additional photos of the windows 
And I believe one of the commissioners may have made a site visit just to check out the condition of those historic windows and see if they weren't the, or be past the threshold for replacement. And APCA has submitted I think, some revised documents showing uh, just those general comments from the last business meeting and the conceptual. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Uh, no, I don't. Eugene doesn't. All right. Uh, Commissioner Thiel, I believe you did the walk there. Is that correct? Uh, Anthony, could I can I interrupt you a minute? Could we start with the garage and then move to the windows since we didn't talk a lot about the garage on our first review? Uh, we can do that. It's not a problem. All right. Commission questions, comments about the revised garage plan. Uh, Anthony? Yes. Uh, we did respond in our design to the uh, arborist uh, recommendation of keeping uh, 12 feet away from this existing tree uh, in the corner of the lot. And so we revised our layout and revised our turnaround and revised the setback distances uh, in, in the rear. And we, I did also field verify that the, the turnaround layout is adequate to uh, turn a, a uh, sedan vehicle around. And I found it surprisingly e uh, uh, easy. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it would be, but that was, it did work. Yep. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? A uh, couple of questions. One is I'm not, I don't think I'm seeing the material of the siding. Uh, moved up to the uh, later panels, there are elevations showing uh, descriptions and specifications for the, uh, the materials. Basically a lap siding uh, for the exterior walls, a, uh, a uh, three tab shingle matching the color and existing uh, house, as well as we're showing uh, galvanized metal corner ribs at, at the peaks uh, with an alternate to use a lap shingle corner, which is what is used on the existing residence. Um, well, there, there are a couple of things the the, the siding smart side um i don't know whether we've had approved uh we definitely have, do not approve vinyl siding the smart side material i'm i'm just i don't think i'm familiar with it's a hardboard uh, okay all right I, I i'm not sure that it's been approved by the commission um shingle tight it, it's not enough just to say it's to match what's on the roof we need to know what's on the what material it actually is it is a shingle it's a composition well it's an asphalt okay. composition I understand. we need we need the the manufacturer and the it, need, it either okay. needs to be from one of the approved from one yep. of the approved shingle lists one of the shingles from the approved list or it needs to be specifically approved by the commission Okay. Um, the door as well, uh, and certainly CHI makes several doors that have been uh, approved by the commission. But again, it's not specified which which one is being used here. Uh, um, something that had come up at our last meeting uh, was that that the plan. I think the application calls for. Uh, asphalt shingle, or uh, sorry, an asphalt driveway. Um, these plans call for a four and a half inch concrete driveway. I think. That was that's correct. It's it was changed from asphalt. Okay, we just need to make sure that the that what's getting approved is it, it, that. Right now, it shows up in two different ways. We just need to make sure that that what we're approving is the revision. 
Okay. okay. I believe the, the overhead door it does specify the type of door and the type of panel design. And I don't know what the note is. It's a little small on my monitor, but I guess it'd be note three of the exterior finish notes. Yeah, that's what I'm, it, it specifies a manufacturer, but not a model. Okay. Uh, means we can't tell what the material is, you know, not being able to go to a, uh, uh, to a manufacturer's cut sheet or a submission of a manufacturer's cut, cut sheet. And I'm, I apologize, but maybe it is further down in the submission. I don't think it is. No. Anyway, those are the things I'm going to tell us. So you're, you're asking that the model number be uh, submitted? Like, yeah, don't we don't know what we're proving. Um, clad, uh, clad fascia, uh, clad fascia is not something that we typically approve. Um, I think this is an aluminum clad fascia. It's, it's a wood with the aluminum standard aluminum cladding that matches the, uh, existing residence. The existing residence was clad, clad aluminum, which is a maintenance for that maintenance, uh, more higher, a lesser maintenance material. I, 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 under, I understand that. It's just not something that, that that's a, been approved by the commission. I mean, a lot, a lot of it was done. A, a, there was a lot of aluminum clad and a lot, or a lot of aluminum siding and a lot of aluminum clad materials and a lot of vinyl siding, vinyl materials that were without the commission's approval um, and it, it's been the practice of the commission not to follow that yeah. practice or not run, just just because you have an aluminum siding and, and I'm just sure. pulling this out of the, not saying this is the case just because yeah. you have aluminum siding in a house doesn't mean you can put aluminum siding on an addition or aluminum siding on a garage um, there are there there are some other materials that can be used on secondary structures like a garage that are not necessarily allowed on the principal historic structure, but that's not one of them. I understand. Unless, you know, unless other commissioners have other opinions. What, what, uh, what is there? Is there a listed material someplace on the guidelines? Generally, all, all trim is, um, is to be wood. However, there are some exceptions to that where we've allowed a material like, um, well, in the case of garages, we've allowed harding materials to be used. Um, in the ca case of garages, we've also allowed, um, what's the other siding material that we allow on historic structure? Sorry, mine's just Boral. 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 Um, boral siding and boral trim boards. Um, That's the manufacturer? Yeah, B O R A L. Okay. Anyway, I'm I'm. Uh, okay. All right. I understand, uh, uh, James. Is uh, on the uh, the uh, siding materials. I understood that if it was a, a forty year vinyl siding with a through color, that that was listed on the uh, guidelines. No, it's not. There's there's no vinyl siding that's listed on the in the guidelines. Okay. All right. The, the only place that we allow it to be done is that we allow vinyl siding. And again, somebody else correct me if I'm wrong. Is if there is damage to an existing structure that has vinyl siding on it, we will allow the replacement or repair of that section of vinyl siding that has been damaged. We we did it in a couple of cases where uh, hail damage had damaged the north face of a house and uh, that side alone was allowed to be replaced. But that's mm -hmm. the only place that we were. Mm -hmm. Okay, for repair. For like 15 years. Yeah. Okay. 
So, so based on Jay's comments uh, and um, I'm getting the feeling that there's not any hesitation from other commissioners on the concept of the garage, the layout of the garage, the size, location of the garage, um, the the paving material, all that stuff seems to be acceptable. Is that any objections to that from the commission? So I think coming out of that conversation, uh, as Jay mentioned, we need to know what specific shingle and if it's from the approved shingle list, that could be uh, staff sent to staff and approved. Um, the siding material, um, we just we've never approved LP Smart Side. Um, nope. Haven't seen it in, in practice. I know a lot of times some of the artificial siding it has that faux wood faux wood grain, which is what we're we're against. Uh, right. Should be a smooth finish. Um, right. So if, if you want to push for LP Smart Side, we probably need to see some samples of what that is. Um, but if you go with a, a boral or uh, a smooth hardy or a wood, uh, any of those three would typically be uh, staff approvable. Um, yeah, so I think that's only open items, I think, regarding the garage. The, trim, itself. the, the door. clad trim and the garage door. Yes. So I'm comfortable. Okay. Am I, am I muted still? Oh, we can hear you. You're quiet, but we can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm comfortable switching to whatever is on the approved list. It doesn't help on the particular material. So hopefully we can get approval with uh, the stipulation that we use one of the materials from the list. Uh, Jacqueline, if, if, if this gets approved and we send this to staff to, to check the final approvals, um, the garage door, are you comfortable with the garage doors we've approved in the past, or does that need to come back to us in your opinion? No, I think that'll be okay. I think we've gone through garage doors enough where I know which ones that you would like to see if it deviates from the standard materials and standard type or design. Uh, any, any problems from the commission with sending that to Jacqueline? <clears throat> there are no reservations there. Okay. And then aside from the garage, uh, it's going to be the historic windows. Yes. Theo, did you get a chance? I believe you're the one that volunteered to go walk. Yeah, I went down and I looked at all of them. Um, the pictures, the most deteriorated ones are where the storm windows have failed or the bottom sash, the storm has been out for a while. But you're you're looking at the worst condition right there. The surface of those windows probably needs to be refurnished, and the glazing putty needs to be replaced. Um, we went back. We went inside to look at them. They're immaculate on the inside. Some of them still have their weights and pulleys, and they're operational. They still align. They still uh, join at the meeting rail. I wouldn't recommend uh, replacing them. Is that a blanket statement for all of them? Yeah, except for there's, I think, two replacement ones, smaller ones on the back um, that, that are not original, but these, yeah, they're all, they're all pretty amazing, to be honest with you. Okay. All right, for, for the applicant, uh, as of last meeting, we, we made the, the comment that we'd let uh, Ned make the assessment, so I think his assessment stands for the commission. So this house was in the ownership of the previous family for 75 years. Various folks, best we can tell, they didn't conduct any maintenance of any kind. And the windows, especially on the west side, anyone use the word amazing? It's really bad. I'm not sure what window being good on the inside matters if the outside is rotted, deteriorating so badly. So I guess I'm amazed at that. Mr. Theo, can you speak to that? I did not hear that. Sorry. Uh, the applicant mentioned that uh, he believed that the exterior on the west side um, were rotted on the outside. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say they're rotted. I would say that they've been weathered and that the soft part of the material is weathered out. But I think that can be consolidated and painted. The trains are tight. Inside, they 
like I said, inside they're amazing. Uh, Jacqueline, do you have um, any window? I, I know GVS probably does, but uh, offline after this meeting, do you have uh, um, craftsmen that have done work on historic windows before that could uh, we could send the applicant to? Uh, yeah, for that, we usually uh, would recommend just getting in touch. Um, oh, gosh, with the not the German Village Society, or you could get in touch with them as well, and they can probably point you to stuff. Uh, Columbus Landmarks uh, usually knows some people offhand who can help. And then we certainly, you know, you can look through uh, past repairs on agendas um, that might list contractors or those who have repaired wood windows as well. So for the applicant, uh, it sounds like there are comments. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, the uh, I've had talked to a couple of painting companies, uh, Prime, uh, Prim Painting, who has done a lot of uh, painting in the German village, and they they uh, uh, said they would stay away from uh, repairs and painting uh, these uh, these windows because it just requires too much work on their effort, or too much work on their part, and uh, it's just too difficult the job. I also talked with uh, uh, staffers painting, and uh, they would expect maybe eight to ten years of use of a restoration, a re rebuilding, and a restoration of of these uh, types of windows. Uh, but that uh, at that point they'll have to do something again. Whereas with the window replacement, the owner could get three times that amount of time out of a new installation with the same two over two configuration. And um, that would uh, be a uh, benefit to the to the owner uh, for uh, uh, their investment, uh, and uh, it would have a very similar appearance as to what we have now. Uh, and uh, so, they're, they're, uh, this would not be an easy uh, repair. I mean, reglazing all the lights, replacing several of the glass windows. And uh, the west elevation has a lot of frame uh, deteriorating and rot, and so uh, I don't know that uh, that is a a, uh, a benefit uh, to the uh, to the homeowners and, and uh, the residents of the village. Were yeah, these, were about... these window restoration companies recommended to you by Columbus Landmarks, people who had experience yeah. doing window restorations of historic structures? No, they were not. And I'm not familiar with Columbus Landmarks, whether uh, what their uh, uh, business is. Do they I do think, this kind um, of work? I think Jody Graken has just posted on the chat a, a link that you might find useful. She's yeah, I would a say this work is beyond historic the preservation. Consultant for the German Village Society. Oh, for the okay. applicant. Okay. Uh, I see the chat. The applicant um, to move forward with this. I think um, what we could do is, since we have agreement on the garage, uh, I think if we split the application, we can vote on the garage separately from the windows. Um, so we can at least get that portion moved forward for you if you'd like. Yes, that would be good. Please. Okay. Uh, then is there a motion from the commission to split the application into two? Mr. Chairman, I move to split, uh, the application into two parts, uh, part a and part B, uh, with part a referring to all the uh, proposals in connection with the garage and part B dealing with all of the other proposed changes. There a second. 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 Three seconds, second, third and fourths. All right. Uh, any questions on the motion? If there are no objections. And hearing none, the motion passes. We'll split that. All right. Is there a motion okay. on the garage portion for approval? Yeah. 
I move on application 4GV-21-05-039A to approve the 2020 application as amended by the applicant and to have the details on the siding, the garage door, the roof shingle, and the trim to be submitted to staff for final approval. Second. Any questions on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. All right, and then item B uh, for the applicant, a uh, couple options here. We can we can vote on this straight up. Um, and I, I think you, you hear where the commission kind of stands. Um, or you could uh, um, ask to continue the application, which will keep on the agenda for next month. If you want to come back with more information after having talked to uh, potentially Columbus Landmarks, Jody Gratian, or, or somebody um, in the preservation world for the windows. Mm -hmm. um, so how would you like us to proceed? Continue, please. Sure, we can do that. Is there a motion? Where are we? On item four. Uh, or B. Mr. So Chairman, on item GV 2105-039-1122 South Pearl Street, item B, I move to continue. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Commissioner Panzer. Sorry. Didn't unmute when I was supposed to. Uh, nay. Say nay. <laughs> this is to continue. Oh, I'm, I'm. No, I want to vote now. Yes, continue. All right, Commissioner. <laughs> Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Farrell. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. And Commissioner Foley. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Motions continued. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Air like is getting to you. <laughs> it's the time zone thing. <laughs> all that, all that, it's not uh, the heat. It's not the heat. It's the humidity. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We'll move ahead to item five. GV dash two one dash zero six dash zero four four. This is 768 City Park Avenue. Is uh, an applicant here for 768 City Park? Yes. All right, I heard the yes, I hear the voice. Looking for the video. Oh, I saw you. You would both please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. I do. And please state your name for the record. Catherine Jenkins. And I'm Parker Sutton. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this application is proposing to remove a Norway spruce from the backyard. The applicant notes that the tree has outgrown the lot and densely shades the entirety of the backyard, making it difficult, difficult to grow other plants. The applicant notes that the tree regularly drops branches and debris onto the yard and neighbor's yard, and that the previous owner had removed many limbs on one side, creating a lopsided and unattractive growth habit. And six large branches are growing into and damaging the cedar trees and veg vegetation of the neighbors and all lower branches are infringing on power lines. The applicant will replace the tree with either a flowering dogwood or a Japanese maple that will grow to a maximum height of 15 to 25 feet tall. So at the May business meeting, the commission noted the arborist report does not comment on the condition of the tree and asked what would be planted in place of the tree and noted that desire to remove alone does not meet the threshold for removal of a mature shade tree. So the applicant has submitted additional photographs, a description of the tree condition, and confirmed what is proposed to be planted in place of the tree. And based on the additional photographs submitted, the existing tree does appear to be overgrown. Uh, so staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to issuance of a certificate. And that is based on the German Village Guidelines uh, philosophy description on page 30. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, for the applicants, do you have anything else to add? No, nothing, nothing to, add. to add. Thank you. Questions, comments from the commission? And 
Commissioner Coy, I'm looking specifically at you. <laughs> um, I don't have any comments. Um, I understand that it is a large tree and I see, you know, how it is absorbing the lot and interfering with the neighbor's property. And I think the proposal for um, replacement tree is um, is a decent solution given its um, height. It's replacing an evergreen tree with an ornamental tree. Okay. Any other questions or comments from the commission? I just wish we had had some recommendation from Russell on how to uh, manage the tree without destroying it. Any other questions or comments? I think, Ned, the only thing that you would be able to do would be go in and selectively remove branches, um, you know, where they would come in contact with wires or, um, you know, the neighbor's fed, the neighbor's um, home and vegetation, and you would end up with an unsightly tree. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Thanks, Karen. Mm-hmm. There's no further comments or questions. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move with respect to number GV-21-06-044768 City Park Avenue to approve as submitted. Second. Second. Uh, any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to item number six, GV-21-21. Lost it. 21 06 0480 East Sycamore Street. We have an applicant for 80 East Sycamore Street. One from DeMarco Roofing. Third call for an applicant for 80 East Sycamore Street. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay, hear the voice. Looking for the camera. There we go. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state your name for the record. Walker. Walker. All right, Jacqueline. This application is proposing to replace existing asphalt shingles with GAF Timberline HD shingles. The color would be weathered wood. Uh, they would be installing valley metal tuxedo gray drip edge, installing step flashing, and 140 feet of cobra vent. The applicant would uh, flash three chimneys and two skylights. Uh, so at the previous business meeting, the commission requested clarification. Oops, sorry, that's the different one. Okay, the approved shingles list was established based on historic use of roofing materials in Columbus, and the commission noted that uh, those not on the approved shingles list uh, would need to have a sample of to evaluate. Um, and specifically the types, colors, and shapes of slate from that proof list was evaluated um, based on what is found in the city of Columbus. And while no asphalt shingle exactly mimics the size, color, and texture of slate, those on the current list are the closest uh, that have been found or have been presented with to this point to the appearance of slate. So staff does recommend replacing the shingles uh, with shingles from the approved shingles list, and that is based on the standards for alterations number 3, 11, and 12. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? So, uh, so we presented the approved shingle list to the customer. Uh, she had a strong preference um, to evaluate the Timberline HD. Uh, um, based on the feedback from the business meeting, um, we've also, um, with respect to that, we, we presented the GAF slate line uh, colors and also the Royal Sovereign, GAF Royal Sovereign colors. Um, 
Miss Seasons had a preference towards the uh, weathered gray in the Royal Sovereign, which I know is not on the list. However, it is the uh, similar in color to the GAF uh, weathered slate, which is. So she had asked that you consider uh, using the Royal Sovereign weathered gray uh, and approve that. Uh, questions, comments from the commission. But just to be clear, the Royal Sovereign is on our approved shingles list. The nickel gray is on the list. Um, and the GAF slate oh, line, Jack, weathered slate. I'll look at the list. So I believe those colors are on the approved list, but we're looking at a different, I think, style with the Timberline HD shingles. Uh, correct. So I, I believe at this point, Miss Seasons is not what, why she would prefer the Timberline HD. Uh, I think she understands that that's not going to happen uh, within the commission area. So she would like to consider the uh, GAF Royal Sovereign weathered gray as an alternative. Uh, while only the nickel gray is currently approved, she's asking for approval of the weathered gray. But the the Nick the question I was asking I guess is the the weathered gray royal sovereign is on our approved forget about the timber line right the weathered gray on the royal sovereign is the royal sovereign shingle forget about color for a moment is the royal sovereign shingle on our approved list yes yes oh. okay that's what I wanted to know that's yeah, we have Jay we have the nickel gray in that shingle. Yeah, which is a little, I think it's a little lighter than the weather gray, isn't it? Yes, the weather gray is a little browner. That's what I thought. This is Ned. I would just prefer to stay with what's on the uh, approved shingle list. In that instance, we would request to amend the application to do the Royal Sovereign Nickel Gray. Okay. You know, I would I would make the the comment that uh, if if the applicant we could approve the Nickel Gray as is, if the applicant wants to come back and that way at least something is approved, they can move forward with. If they want to come back and and push for um, the the weathered gray. Um, and and to bring us a sample, you know, the sample. I mean, the 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 current list went through a pretty rigorous review, uh, and I know right now the the, the heartache hurdle we have right now is we're not doing in person meetings, so we have to kind of take a look at when we could actually get together as commission to look at a physical sample to have the roundtable discussion about it, uh, as opposed to every member looking individually. And that's that's our our struggle right now. We, we we're trying to get past. So I think if if as you as you ask to amend Nickel Gray, we can vote, we can approve that. Uh, at least there's something in hand to move forward with. Oh, we'd like to proceed um, with the amended application for Nickel Gray. Any other questions from the commission? Mr. Chairman, on item 06 GV 2106045 Sickest Moore Street, I move to. Approve as amended to the nickel gray in the sovereign shingle as requested by the as amended by the applicant. Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right, we'll move on to item number seven, which is GV 21 06 046 539 Mohawk Street. Is there an applicant for 539 Mohawk? I believe. Yes, I'm, I'm here. All right, I'm looking for you. There we go. Please raise your right hand. 
You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Please state your name for the record. Kevin Kaufman. Thank you very much. Jacqueline? I'm Kyle and Kathleen's father, father-in-law. Thank you, Mr. Kaufman. All right, so this application is proposing to install two gas lanterns to frame the front door of the home. The proposed lanterns would be located on the north side facing Jackson Street. At the May business meeting, the commission asked to confirm the size of the proposed fixtures and which type and asked for a photo or color rendering. And the applicant has submitted additional materials following the commission feedback. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff uh, prior to issuance of the certificate. And that is based on the standards for alteration number 12. Mr. Kaufman, anything else to add? No. Um, do you have uh, the necessary material from uh, Kyle and Kathleen to make a decision? I, I believe we do. Okay, great. All right, commissioners, any questions or comments? All right, I, I'm back to the you know, two coach lights on either side of an entry door, which is just not, um, I mean, not something that I'm aware of with very, very few exceptions having seen in the village. And it's just decoration and it, it I think I'm done approving two coach lights, except under very, very, under circumstances where it is evident that they existed previously. I would agree with Jake. And I will, I will throw my hat in. I, I also agree. I, I did a walk of the village, a um, couple streets. Um, and for the most part, uh, it's a single fixture per door um, where there are two fixtures per door, especially two gas fixtures per door. Um, it, it looks it looks out of place. Um, even with electric fixtures, it looks like all the dual fixture locations are, are modern installations. And I'm just not seeing a historical um, precedent for for the dual fixtures. Um, I think the size is appropriate height of it. Uh, that 18 ish inches, I think, is the is the sweet spot for those fixtures. Uh, so I'm I'm in favor of a single fixture, but I would not be in favor of two. Yeah, it's it's beyond function. Excuse me. Mr. Thiel said it was it was beyond functional, it's decorative as opposed to functional. Oh, I hear. Okay. So one fixture is approved, but not a dual. I, I can't speak for full commission, <laughs> but when we take the vote, I, I believe you'll find that they'll be in favor of a single fixture. Okay. Uh, we could vote on two if you'd like, but I think you will have a better chance of one. Well, I think it sounds like no one is in favor of two. Uh, is that correct? I think I think to be to be uh, fair to you, uh, the commissioners, is anyone in favor of two gas fixtures? Okay, thanks. I'm on the fence on two gas fixtures because gas fixtures don't put out the same amount of light that electric fixtures do, and in some cases, I feel like a single gas fixture doesn't provide enough illumination. Karen, I would I would argue that two don't put out enough light. <laughs> oh, that's probably true. <laughs> I mean, I I would argue that if if light if illumination were were the discussion here, we wouldn't be talking about gas lights. Okay. Gas. Okay. I mean, <laughs> yeah. they, they are decorative elements and and pretty much decorative elements only. So, am oh. I the only one who has a little concern with the style of the fixture? Oh, Feel, I, I, know. I, I know we beat <laughs> one up last month, and one of the reasons mm -hmm. we beat it up is because it was too decorative, uh, and we were looking for something a bit simpler. My 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 get my concern is kind of the top of the fixture there. Though I don't know, mm -hmm. maybe it's very 
very kind of trying to look old, right, kind of thing, but isn't looking old. Um, I like the material. It's similar material to the one we just approved, but something a little bit more simpler and contemporary would make more sense to me based was on I, the comments I, we had last month. Yeah, I'm not sure it's that far off of what we approved over on uh, Pearl earlier. Yep. Brent, I think the, the one that got beat up in your in your terms, um, that was, I'll say, very shiny uh, materials. Uh, it stood out due to the, the brightness of the materials, as opposed to something more coppered, brass, weathered, that'll be more dull. Uh, even though I believe there is more material here, uh, I think the fact of the, the color, the dullness of it, the tarnish that it'll have over time will will blend better in my opinion and i have a question am i seeing like surface mounted lights in the soffit or is that something else i'm sorry i can't i can't answer that hey, hey. teresa i don't think there are i mean mm -hmm. that, that house is just up the street from me outside of my boundary so i can vote on this but i don't remember anything like that when that house is on at night mm -hmm. okay yeah, yeah. So, so the guidelines address this and indicate that we should avoid exterior light fixtures that are overly ornate, uh, whatever that means, uh, and ask us to remember that electric fixtures are a 20th century feature so that 19th century inspired coach lamps are inappropriate. That, that we should avoid shiny brass pendants and filials on light fixtures. There's language approving porch light fixtures, which were added in the 20th century, but of course, there's not a porch uh, a porch here, mm -hmm. which is why so many of the houses have those lights, single lights on the side to provide some illumination. And of course, historically, the only illumination, exterior illumination in the village were street lights. And, and Jeff, and I, I thought about this. I, I would go say with modern day technology, probably shouldn't be approving light fixtures, surface mounted or otherwise on either side of a door and go with a little LED that lights up the stoop from above. <laughs> You're going to be purist about it. You know, Ned, well, that's, an interesting, that's an interesting comment because we... You know, a lot of the work that was done and a lot of the stuff that was approved. I know uh, before I was on this commission, we did a submission for 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 Jim Nichols at his house on Sycamore. And there was a lot of discussion about putting light fixtures in the in the uh, soffit above the door. And, you know, the he had some external exterior fixtures that were already in place and he wanted to put recessed ones in. And there was a no comment to that. Because of messing with the 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 the, the historic um, yeah. fabric, however, mm -hmm. technology has changed uh, quite a bit with LEDs, and and are the standards in line with the updates to technology? And maybe they're not. Maybe we need to think a little bit differently about this. Maybe now is the time. Yeah. Well, not in this meeting, but I agree with you, Brent. I, I agree that that this portion of the guideline needs to be addressed. Um, I, I did some, I'll say, casual surfing of other historic districts across the country, uh, and the language in those varies quite a bit. Uh, some of the more more restrictive say no exterior fixtures and, and go, go with ground based lighting, yeah, for for illumination purposes. Uh, but our guidelines don't have that, so I can't necessarily support that. Um, so I think that's kind of where I'm at. I think the one fixture is the max I go, um, but I think we need to review fixtures in general um, yeah. as a rule. I would well, I guess, and I'm not trying to make the changes in 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 the meeting. I'm not please tell me to shut up if I get too far down the path. But in the interpretation of what Jeff just read with new technology, do we interpret the guidelines different now is more the question that i'm I'm putting out there or should we be? and not just be basing it on what we had done before. Because when we were doing that before, and I say we, proverbial we, when we were doing that before, the technology wasn't the same. And, and it's a question. To and, ask. And I, I would agree, and I think we need to give some thoughtful 
consideration and come up with a policy going forward sometime. Because right now when I heard Jeff read that, it sounds like electric lights, new electric lights are not appropriate because they are 20th mm -hmm. century, unless it's at a 1920s port. So it, by reading yeah. that, it's like a 19th century gas light is appropriate. Mm -hmm. As long well, as it's overly ornate well, or shiny. Actually, the the guidelines, the page before on page 76 says that uh, in the 19th century, light fixtures were rarely attached to buildings and instead residents relied on street lights. And then when the village was electrified, why that ceiling electric porch lights were very common. Sure. But I, well, you know, you know my attitude generally about these exterior gas lights. They're all of them are historically inappropriate in German village. Well, so there were so, there were never any historically. And Jeff, and that goes for the electric ones too. Well, but oh well, no, if you're going to get rid of one, you get rid of the other. Well, that's why I was curious when the village was electrified. Different parts of the village were electrified yeah. at different periods, but. Most of it goes from 18, probably 1895 to 1925. And a lot of these oh. houses had gas as in interior illumination. So Yes, mine did, certainly. Well, mine did. Just... Which also, in, in a lot of the cases, had gas, you had gas interior illumination. And some of those houses actually did have gas exterior illumination. It was not, <laughs> yeah, very, it was not very common. Tech. I think that it, the, I mean the problem or the issue that we're talking about here. It, it, I, I mean, I also think we need to think until we have a uh, a, a full and thoughtful discussion about how <laughs> to take this going forward. We need to be careful not to um, throw out what has been a a very long standing practice of the commission. Um, and, and do it in kind of an arbitrary way. And, the, and, the, and the, the, the longstanding practice has been to approve a single coach light, a uh, single gas coach light. I, I don't like them. I think that in this day and age with LEDs, you can deal with the light that you want. And with gas, it's just irresponsible to be doing it. It's environmentally irresponsible to be doing it. So I don't like it for a lot of reasons. And I think we should change it. But I, I also think that 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 barring having some kind of a formal interpretation of what is in our current guidelines and or changing our guidelines, um, I think we need to kind of stick with precedent here. I, I agree with Jay. and I and I agree with that. <laughs> Sorry if I got us down a rabbit hole, that, but I think that was a good dialogue. Thank you. Rabbit hole. It's, it's a good rabbit hole. We're gonna have to have a conversation about. Anytime you come back with dinner, it's a good rabbit hole. <laughs> All right. So I think the original ask was, Chris Foley, would you be uh, opposed to two fixtures or are you on the one fixture boat? Um, or are you opposed completely? No, I'm not opposed completely. In, in the spirit of what Jay just said, I, I mean, if we've if we've approved two and that's kind of the guidelines we've done, or if we've approved one and that's the precedences we've, I, I'd kind of follow the the guidance of others that have more history with the commission than me. Commissioner so, McCoy, where do you stand? Two versus one versus none. I prefer two. You prefer two. All right, uh, Commissioner Ferial. So I think we should stick with what we've been approving and that's just the one. So for the applicant, um, Long way around. <laughs> so, uh, it sounds like we have four who are who are okay with with one, and just a handful that are okay with two. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like the majority are, are in the ones court. Okay, so two is a no go. If they want to do one, that is approved, and they can go forward. We can take the vote. If you'd like us to amend the oh. application for a single fixture, we can vote on that. Because two is uh, not acceptable, correct? We haven't. It sounds like you won't have the votes. Oh, it sounds okay. like you won't have the votes to get two. Well, let's vote on two first, if that's okay. Um, if we vote on two and it's it's uh, denied, 
you have to come back and reapply. Okay. Uh, we can vote on one and get that in your hands. And then we can vote for a second one. If you'd like to have a second application there, we can. Okay. Real quick, I think a table. So let's vote on one then, please. Yeah. Okay, so, and, and that to make it clear, you're asking us to amend, asking to amend your application to only one so that we can vote on that instead of voting on the two. That is correct. Thank you. And then to, to clarify, Mr. Kaufman, um, the light fixture that you, the single light fixture, would that be on the left side of the door where the current fixture is? That side of the door or would it be on the right side of the door? Um, I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, do you, do you want me to text quickly? I think I think we just need to have the final location sent to staff before purchasing installing the fixture. Yeah, Anthony, I don't think either side any different. I, I mean, I would recommend over the mailbox, but I would I don't think yeah. either side is a deal breaker. It, the information you just needs to go to staff so it's recorded in, with the application. That's all. Okay. Are you so we have. To me? Uh, we'll we'll put it in the application and in, in the vote. It's fine. Okay. Thank you. Yep. All right. So is there a motion on the amended application? Yeah. GB twenty one oh six oh four six. 539 Mohawk Street, I move to approve as amended by the applicant to one fixture and location on east or west side of the door will be part of um, documentation to planning. HBO. Second. Is there any question on the motion? All right, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Commissioner McCoy? Sorry. Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you, everyone. Just so that I'm clear, can they? install this on either side of their door yes we, we don't have a problem either side you just need to make sure you you let jacqueline know which side is going to be okay. on. understood i'm taking yep. notes for them okay thank right. you everyone you're done well, with me you. correct <laughs> yes. we're good with you mr kaufman thank you <laughs> mr kaufman thank you. thank you for uh being patient as we discussed that issue too i appreciate it <laughs> yes absolutely <laughs> glad to um, thank you again, everyone. Yep. Have a good night. All right, we'll move on to item number I believe we're on eight. Uh, GV-21-06-047. Eight five seven City Park. Applicate an applicant for eight five seven City Park. Here. All right. Uh, looking for you. Please raise your right hands. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Please state your names for the record. Tyler Graham. Daniel May. Very much. All right, Jacqueline. Hey, this application is proposing to regrade between the road and the new city port sidewalk and also install Indiana limestone 21 inches in length, tapering from 12 inches to 6 inches to hold in the homeowner soil and landscaping. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked if the plan is to have the limestone wall return around the corner. And they asked if the wall will be located immediately against the sidewalk and asked to confirm that the wall will not be located in the public right of way. In response to commission feedback, the applicant notes that the purpose of the wall is to retain the topsoil and help avoid erosion and that the wall will make the turn with the transition from concrete to pavers and will butt immediately against both the concrete and the pavers. And the applicant notes the wall will not block the public right of way and will be installed and backfilled as needed with a permeable gravel base. So staff recommends approval uh, with the condition that the limestone is located outside of the public right of way. And that is based on the standards for site improvements, letters A and B. Thank you, Jacqueline. Does the applicant have anything else to add? No, sir. 
All right, questions, comments from the commission? So this this wall is um, dry laid? Yes. Yes. OK. Questions from the commission? And, and it aligns with the fence? Is it in yes. OK. So what happens at the supports, the existing supports for the fence, the concrete? For the fence posts? We should be in front of them? Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? If there are none, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, item 8 GV 21060478578 City Park Avenue. I move to approve. The application is submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? I just want to clarify that the retaining wall is going to be behind the fence posts. Behind the towards the sidewalk on the sidewalk side? Or on the property side versus on the sidewalk. Correct. Okay. All right. Any other questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Uh, chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to item number nine, GV-21-06-048, 803 South 5th Street. All right. If you see you there, please raise your hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please take your name for the record. Jill Levy. Thank you, Ms. Levy. Uh, Jacqueline? This application is proposing to replace four non-historic windows, including one over one, double hun in the master bedroom, and a one over one in the guest bedroom, as well as two double casement windows over the garage. The applicant would like to replace with the Woodstar Window Nation windows. Uh, the windows are not on the approved windows list. However, they have been previously approved as a test case um, at 756 City Park Avenue in 2018. At the May business meeting, the commission asked about the other windows, uh, noting they would like to avoid mismatched windows, which would be best. Um, and staff also checked for records uh, regarding updates on the test case for 756 City Park Ave, but no records were in the file uh, for that test case. Um, so staff generally recommends approval with any clarification to be submitted to staff. Um, provided that the test case was successful for the other property, and that is based on the standards for alteration number 12. All right. Uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? I have nothing to add. All right. uh, to the commission, questions or comments? There are no comments. Is there a motion? I'm sorry. Has anybody seen the test case or have thoughts on the test case? I walked by uh, the property from the street to the look. I didn't see anything that was glaringly problematic to me. Um, but I didn't have a chance to get in and actually touch or anything to it. But from the, from the right of way, it did not seem to be uh, problematic. Thank you. That's all I had. With that, I think I can move to approve uh, GV-2106048. Second. 
Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? I, I think it's just important, Anthony, I think it's just important to, to note that we are not at this point necessarily recommending that these windows be type approved, but that we're just looking at it for this specific application. Essentially extending the test to another location. Exactly. Let's uh, let the record show that my motion says that. <laughs> Fair enough. That'd be good to have two two tests that we could check back at. All right. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Aye. Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. Fair votes eyes well. Eyes have it. And motion passes. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Jacqueline will get with you uh, about uh, uh, notifying the commission when the installation is done, and then we'll come back uh, at a, a set time as, as Jacqueline will put forth to take a look at the windows just to make sure that they we won't make you take, take them out if there's a problem with them. We just want to be able to be able to see those up close uh, and, yeah. and validate that they are successful. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, uh, moving on to item 10. GV-21-06-049873 South 3rd Street. We still have the folks on the record, so no need to swear back in. Uh, Jacqueline? Okay, for this application, uh, they are proposing to install a 6 by 10 foot custom built Pinewood storage shed at the rear right of the home. They would install approximately 70 square feet of new Bellcrest 760 paver patio slash walk at the rear right of the home. There would be removal slash replacement of approximately 90 square feet of Kentucky bluegrass sod at the front yard and approximately 80 square feet of damaged and weak Kentucky bluegrass sod at the rear yard. So at the May business meeting, the commission noted that the sod is probably fine and asked for product info on the paver to confirm that it is brick rather than concrete block and ask for photos or information to understand what is in the vicinity of the shed and existing site condition. The applicant has submitted additional photos of the yard from different angles and confirmed that the paver will be brick and confirmed that that Bellcrest 760 paver is indeed a brick paver. So staff recommends approval with any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to issuance of a certificate and that is based on the standards for site improvements letter A. All right, does the applicant have anything else to add? Nope. All right. Questions, comments from the commission? If this thing is right up against the property line, how are you going to paint it? Right against the property line, how are we going to paint it? So, Jacqueline, do you, Ms. Jacqueline, do you have any photos of the actual drawings that we had? So, spacing right there is fairly accurate. Keep going. There's others of the actual shed. There we are. There you go. You're spacing there on the right hand side. Painting it will be about two foot away from the existing fence. Uh, I mean, the drawing says one foot, but okay, one foot. Ever. If two foot makes you happy, we'll go two or three. No, no, I, I, no, no, I'm, I'm. Seriously, I'm not trying to be argumentative. I'm, I'm asking a real world problem. The, okay. um, I don't think there's any intention on painting the fence or the, any, the, fe the fence probably, um, but the shed, no. Well, we've got an eight foot tall shed that's sided in plywood. You can't yeah. just leave it, leave bare it, plywood. Right, we'll paint it. It'll get painted when we go up. I'm not sure, um, you know, we can move it over two or three feet if that seems, you know, more reasonable to you. And then she can reach a roller back in there and paint it. It would be clearly maintenance, not visibility. So no one's going to see back in there. So we can certainly slide it over so there's a little extra space in there. I'll just say, as an as an owner with a shed of of two one by one eleven plywood uh, up against a fence. Um, <laughs> If you get that extra space in there, it'll be beneficial. Uh, the backside of my shed's rotted out, so <laughs> five yeah. years on. 
I think that's a great idea. What do you recommend as far as spacing? I think that that two feet, I think, is plenty. Um, okay. So. Perfect. All right. That way, in ten years, when that backside ends up being rotted, you can take it off and put a new one on. Is there fair point? If you do paint it, you can send the skinny guy back there. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, the question that goes along with that is, is we're talking about um, exterior grade plywood for the siding of this. Is that okay? That is correct. Yes. Is that okay? I mean, I'm not a shed person, so I asked the I I asked Anthony, what do you feel? How do you feel about that? I'm um, I'm okay with it. Um, it's going to be mainly blocked by the fence. It's it's behind the house. So you're not going to see it. Uh, long term maintenance is long term maintenance. So I don't think it's a principal structure or anything. Okay with it. Any other questions or comments from the commission? If there are none, is there a motion? I move on application number 10, GB-21-06-049873 South 3rd Street to approve the application as submitted with the amendment from the applicant to move the shed to be 24 inches away from the existing fence and that the Bellcrest paver has been confirmed to be brick and not concrete. Second. Second. All right, I think our Commissioner McCoy get the second. Any questions on the motion? We'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Commissioner Foley? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time. You. We'll move on to item number 11, which is GV-21-06-050. Do we have applicant for 745-747-6 South 6th Street? Yes, uh, David Watkins, Plank Law Firm, uh, <clears throat> on behalf of the uh, homeowners, Chris and Angel and Pinkerton, and they're here with me. Uh, they most likely will not be speaking, but I guess you should probably just swear all of us in. We can do all one shot. Please raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. All right, and if you all please state your names for the record. Okay, all David right. Watkins. Christopher Pinkerton. Angela Pinkerton. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is proposing to remove two sets of concrete steps located at the front porch. The applicant would replace existing north concrete step with new limestone steps and remove the center rail dividing the front porch and infill the porch guard rail where the south steps were removed to match the existing rail and those south steps will not be replaced. The applicant would like to remove the pipe railing next to the south concrete steps and install a new black iron railing to the north new limestone steps. They would also be refurbishing two front doors and add a new Larson screenaway storm door over the north door and a full light storm panel over the south door. That can also be planning to paint the porch ceiling, columns, and rail. So at the earlier business meeting, the commission or at the February 2nd uh, commission meeting where this application was where this property was reviewed in a different application, the commission noted that the standard is to keep the door in stair as is and to put pots and plants on these steps to denote that the door is not being used as an entrance. The front facade with historically two entries should read as having two entries. So the non-historic concrete steps themselves do not have to be retained, but the notion of steps is important. And noted that for past applicants, the commission has had applicants put movable items on the steps to block the entry as opposed to infilling railing. And some commissioners expressed that they are okay with removing the rear non-historic steps, as this would affect neither historic fabric nor design at the rear. And in response to the business meeting feedback, the applicant has submitted past applications for different properties and some photos of different properties around the village. Uh, so removing the front steps with no replacement and altering the railing would alter the design and, and historic fabric of the duplex residence. So staff recommends approval of replacing 
the non-historic concrete steps with the new fine steps to match and the repair of doors and the painting of porch and adding new screen storm doors with the condition that the porch railing and that the historic duplex configuration is not altered. And that is based on the standards for alterations number numbers 1, 2, 5, 6, 10, and 12. Thank you very much. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the applicant believes that the uh, standards uh, just enumerated uh, as 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 applied to this particular property it would be uh, arbitrary and capricious uh, based on the, the the fact that there are numerous occasions uh, within the in the village where uh, similar structures or similar uh, configurations are in existence and it's been previously been approved uh, by the commission and uh, so it you know it, in terms of the uh, the application, I, I, I do have some exhibits I'd like to show uh, of, of similar or, you know, similar uh, structures. And if you would look at uh, exhibit A, which also has a corresponding uh, exhibit A1. Uh, exhibit A is a is 158 East, East Beck. Uh, the certificate of appropriateness uh, was approved remove front entryway addition and replace the front door with a window to match existing. Uh, this Excuse is a change. Me, what was the date on that, that application? I don't know if it's relevant, but I'll tell you anyway. October 12th, 1972. I, I, I hate to disagree with you, but I find the dates of the applications to be entirely relevant. Well, that's fine. That's your opinion. Uh, yeah. If you can see that, you can see that the structure of the, and the uh, configuration is not too different from what we're looking at right now, and it's a quite attractive. And uh, there's it, it's it's not a detriment at all. And I think based on the on these exhibits, and also these aren't exhaustive exhibits. I mean, we can go through the you know we can go through the village and find numerous more exhibits. These are just examples. So, if you would look at exhibit B, which also has a uh, B B one as a uh, exhibit B one is the paperwork related to the certificate of appropriateness. It's uh, for Mr. Panzer at seven twelve seventy eight. Uh, this is three hundred East Beck, and so uh, the you know what. The, uh, the certificate of appropriation allowed the, the property owner to close up the front door and convert to window to match three existing windows. Again, similar example of, of what needs what we want to do here. Uh, if you would then go to exhibit C. And there is no certificate of appropriateness information with this one. It's uh, 512 C Park C Avenue, and you can see that there's a uh, the door is changed to a window at that at that location. Uh, and then if you would go to Exhibit D, and uh, a corresponding to that is the certificate of appropriateness, uh, the application and the certificate, which is dated uh, received March 6, 2006. And uh, this is 700 Mohawk. Uh, and if you look at D1, which is, I guess it would be, uh, there are photographs at the end of the actual application that show what the structure looked like beforehand. And uh, then after, you can see that the, uh, the changes were you know were were similar to the changes that we're looking at in this case and then if you go to exhibit e exhibit e and there's the application and the certificate of appropriateness attached to that as exhibit e1 
uh, that's dated uh, uh, 12-16-75. This is uh, 715-717 City Park and uh, the COA uh, approved to replace two front doors with a full with full length uh, windows. And if you go to exhibit F, Seven eighty four South Third Street, and the certificate of appropriateness dated is uh, July January fourth, two thousand five. I don't think this is this is correct. I'm looking at Exhibit F. Exhibit F would be, I believe, seven eighty four South Third. I'm actually not seeing that in the materials. These are the only photos that are in the materials. Exhibit F is not there. Well, between me and 66 Pearl, so. No, that, that, that's, uh, that's an exhibit that I submitted that I wasn't going to discuss about. Exhibit uh, F I submitted and also Exhibit G. Uh, well, Exhibit F for the record is 784 South 3rd. And it's, uh, it shows, I guess I could show you what it looks like if you want to look at it, but it's, uh, if you want to, if you can zero in on that, I don't know if that's appropriate here. Uh, is it showing anything? Okay. Does that show anything or is that a waste of time? It's a it's a double, and it has uh, stone steps on the right door uh, and no stone steps on the left. Correct, correct. And uh, again, it's just example of two doors, one set of steps. And with landscaping, you know, that's the kind of landscaping that we would do in front of the uh, the entry that we are removing. And then, uh, do you have Exhibit G? Yeah, there it is, eight seventy four City Park, uh, and. In the application, the approved, what was approved with replaced front door facing street with window. Again, no no steps. So uh, you know, as far as you know, our, is our opinion that uh, uh, it it makes sense to approve this uh, based on past precedents and also based on the uh, just walking around the village, uh, also so that we would maintain that uh, if. There's a negative vote on this. Uh, that vote would be arbitrary and capricious. All right, thank you. Questions, comments from the commission. Sorry. I'm trying. And sorry. For the applicant. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Time out. Time out. For the applicant on Exhibit G, did you have a date for that COA as well? Uh, November 1st, 1989. Thank you. Well, that's the expiration date. So the date of is November 1st, 1988. Thank you. All right, questions, comments from the commission? Well, our guidelines clearly state that if there is a door that it's to be retained and that if there are stoops and and steps to a porch to an entrance no longer used that the steps should remain in place as well well the door so, is going the door is going to be maintained at least for that yes that so just for, for reference page 68 of the guidelines uh, under the recommendations item two even if doors are closed off and other entrances of the building are used Avoid removing stoops and porches. Always make it possible to use the doorway again in the future. It says avoid. Uh, we, we, we can't avoid it at this point in time. It's going to be turned into a, a one, one family dwelling. There's absolutely no reason to, to, to leave it. And uh, again, like I said, there's a lot of numerous examples uh, in the village already of 
similar situation. I'd have to say that making a, a, a structure from a two family to one family that, that, that by no means states that the door can't be there. That's just seems that just means the door needs to be a fixed panel, which has happened in the past. Um, so I think I, that's an inaccurate statement. The door is staying there. The door is right. staying there. I don't it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe and I'm going to say what you just said <coughs> in a different way. The, the discussion point here is not about the door. The door is going to stay. The door is going to be refurbished. It's going to have a full light storm panel to open the door. So there's, there's no change to that opening being envisioned. The things that we're talking about is, uh, are the removal of the section of railing between the two units at the center of the porch. That is not, to, to my mind, not visible for, or not readily visible mm -hmm. from the public way and is readily reversible if and when this were to ever become a double again. And, and I don't believe it causes any confusion on the part of the public as to the location or the nature of the entry. So I, I've got no problem with the removal of that rail. I think the, that the, the removal of the steps, I think, is subject to, to some discussion because clearly the steps that are there are not original um those concrete steps would would almost almost certainly these houses most of them had wood steps going up to a fortress i mean that was just the way they did it um we have long allowed uh cut limestone to to be used because it was a very common material in in mm -hmm. the village the problem the the area uh the, the last area that that I've got the biggest problem with is actually the nature of the infill panel to match the existing, because that does create a, to, to my mind, does create a bit of a, of a false narrative um, in, ter in terms of the construction of that. In terms of the precedents that you've, you've put forward, almost all of them and, and all of the most substantive ones are very, very old, and in most cases predate the latest iterations of the guidelines and the latest iterations of the Secretary of the Interior's, um, uh, not guidelines, what are the, the Secretary of the Interior standards? Um, and, and I think they also um, talk about a, uh, a an evolution of what has been acceptable and, and not acceptable um, based on those changes in guidelines over the years. So the, I, I, don't, I don't think you can point to something from 1972 and say, because we're not following an old set of guidelines uh, and that it happened a lot around the village, that it's being arbitrary or capricious. Per, well, that's, my personal, that's my personal opinion. My, my, I would say my biggest issue is where very specifically a, a false narrative of history, um, it would be easily interpreted by a lay person. And that has to do with that railing. That's my take on it. Well, there's six mm -hmm. other people here. The suggestion was that uh, we put a pot of plants in front of the door on the steps. Doesn't that give a false sense of history of, you know, who's going to put a set of pots and plants on the steps that is supposed to be an entryway. And I disagree with the fact that all of the relevant or most of the relevant exhibits were old. And I also would point out that we didn't do an exhaustive search of the whole village, uh, which we could do, I guess. And I think we'd find more of the more recent. Well, let me let me put it this way. 15 year or 14 years and six months of being on the commission, the number of times that we've allowed stoops to be removed in this kind of a circumstance and railings to be put in uh, to close off existing railings are, are virtually non-existent. Um, that's in my, in my time on the commission. And I say virtually, it's not without exception. Um, the, the, the plants on the, on the stoops, I can tell you exactly the property that it came from. It came from the property immediately adjacent to, uh, uh, 
Frank Fetch Park, immediately to the east of Frank Fetch Park. That was a circumstance where um, I believe limestone, historic limestone steps were there, and the front door of the historic cottage was there, and the, the entry to the principal entry to the residence was being moved around the corner of the house, St. Also, it's still on, on Beck Street, but around the side of the house, I should say. Um, and they didn't want people walking up to that stoop and potentially potentially even harming themselves on the stoop. But because the stoop was part of the historic fabric, it was not allowed to be demolished. It was not allowed to be removed. Um, again, related but different circumstances. There's no argument here that the stoop that we are seeking to remove is historic. It's not limestone. It's, it's just the concrete. That, that was my point. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I got a problem with the rail. I got a problem with the infill rail. That's that's my big problem. So you're okay with the stoop? If that were infilled in a different manner, it would make clear the nature of that opening having been historically part of the entry procession to the house. And it that being open, mm -hmm. I'm not saying it has to stay open, I'm just saying, but that being open and being distinct would make clear the historic nature of the second entry to the house. That's that's my take on just continuing the railing doesn't do that. It it creates a false sense of history rather than revealing the history for what it was. And Jay, this is Ned. I, I agree with you. It's it's a matter of safety that a railing has to go there. Mm -hmm. But it yeah. should not be the railing that matches the existing there. It's something that needs to be more transparent and simpler. I mean, a glass panel with a wood cap on it, something like that would would pass the muster better than what you're proposing. A cable, a cable rail, a piece of a wrought iron rail. I mean, I, I think there are any number of things that aren't replication of the existing rail that could in yep. That That's the issue. This is a porch. All the other ones that you cited are not porches. They're openings into the main block of the house. This is a different situation because you want to use that space, but you got a safety issue. Mm -hmm. And you got to solve that with somehow coming up with a railing that works for code, but doesn't destroy the architectural nature and interpretation of that porch. So I wasn't I wasn't focusing on this <laughs> when we were looking at the various exhibits. Did any of the stoops that were removed go up to a porch on a double? No. I don't think so. There were, there were no porches, Jeff. Well, that's right. Um, so that's what I was thinking. Um, Our guidelines on but, page 68 say that porches and stoops, whether original or later additions, should be preserved. Yeah, the current guidelines are pretty clear about this. I, I would say that any certificate of appropriateness that was issued before the current iteration of the guidelines were adopted um, is irrelevant unless accompanied by si similar language in the previous iteration of the guidelines. Um, so, so that to say it's arbitrary, he didn't say he capricious, said. but arbitrary. I said um, capricious. He did. To say arbitrary and capricious without the iteration of the language in the earlier guidelines is um, is misplaced. And I would assume that the, that's sitting here that the commission does not have an idea either of what it's what what the previous iteration was i mean at this point in time correct i don't have a copy with me i don't i don't know that i have a copy anywhere i don't know that the city has a copy i presume it does i i'm not entirely certain that it well from the well never mind never mind get circular here. But um, again, I think the steps, uh, the steps are different than the porch because we know the steps are not, are, are not historic. So they're not removal of them. If, 
in terms of historic fabric is not an issue. We're not talking about removing a stoop, which would be something leading directly to a to the front door. Um, we're not talking about removing a porch because the porch is remaining. Um, the, the, remo the removal of the stoop was actually the, the issue on Beck Street, um, where it was up to a principal entry. Uh, as I say, I, I'm left with a problem with of the rail. That that's the only issue I have here. So your, your only issue at this point in time is if, if there was a different type of railing in front of the non-used door, uh, it would be acceptable. Everything else would be okay. Well, a, type, a type of railing that still allowed the fact that that used to be an opening to an entrance remain. And Ned's suggestion of something clear like glass with the top rail would do that. Gla glass is a little, I, I mean, I find mm -hmm. glass is wonderful in theory because you think it's transparent, but it really isn't. It's reflective and it's not, it's not really transparent. So the places that we've, well, we've you, talked Jay, about. I'm not, Jay, I'm not thinking about transparency. I'm thinking about code application and complying with that. Right. The fact that it's a simple solution. Yeah, I'm, as I say, cable, glass, there's probably a contemporary or, or, or a very simple wrought iron solution there. It it just that it needs to be it needs to be separate and distinct from the existing porch rail. Yep. That's that's my only problem with any of this. But I suggest you go around to the rest of the gang and see whether they agree with that and whether you have an idea of what you want to do about it. So, uh, Commissioner Thiel, your thoughts on um, the stair removal? I, I think they want to get rid of access there on, I believe, the south side of that porch. And I think by doing that, they need to put up a simple railing that's pretty neutral. But I think stairs have always been there and stairs need to stay. Oh, Commissioner Durst. Uh, I think the historic nature of the house is that it was symmetrical with two entrances and two sets of steps. And if you want to block the door by fixing it, that's fine. And some a similar type of solution needs to be done with the other opening. So I think that was his suggestion was that the steps remain, but they are just blocked off by something that's that's temporary. Commissioner McCoy. I I agree. I think the steps should remain or be replaced with limestone as you're suggesting that you're doing um, with the east side of the house or let's see, or the north side of the house. And I would, um, you know, if there's a center rail present that you want to remove that separated the two sides, I don't have an issue with removing that. But um, I, I sort of feel like I feel like the stairs should remain open and and you should just put pots on the side that you don't want to use because that's what is that's the way I interpret our guidelines. Mr. Foley. I'm in line with the group. I, I think the stairs should stay in a non historic um replica rail would make sense or something like Karen suggesting I would be okay with either of those. Commissioner Farrell. Yeah, so the symmetrical the symmetrical appearance of the house with two stairs has two stairways has been that way since the house was built. They were probably, as Jay suggests, uh, almost certainly wooden steps, but there were steps there uh, from undoubtedly from the uh, from the construction of the house. Taking the steps away detracts from the historic appearance of the house in a dramatic way. Um, I'm kind of not so thrilled about the idea of glass either. I, I'm not sure how. I kind of like Karen's idea of some sort of uh, planters or something that uh, maybe even on the steps that would make it clear to others passing by that it's no longer an entrance but removing the steps 
is uh, more permanent change to the house that detracts from its historic character in a way that is incompatible with the current guidelines. And I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as Commissioner Panzer. He actually swayed me into um, the fact that the stairs aren't historic, which I had not taken into account, didn't see that from the in the image and I look closer and realize that they were uh, indeed concrete. Um, I think removing the stairs is what's creating the issue of needing a rail in the first place. If the stairs were to remain or replaced, the rail wouldn't be needed. Um, so I think it's, it's the applicant choice of which way they want to go. Uh, if they do remove the stairs and they want to, and they need to put a rail in, then the rail needs to abide by um, uh, all the conversation stated. And I'm, I'm in agreement with the, the middle divider of the porches. Can I ask a question of the applicant before we, we kind of digress? Um, you know, there are, there are a lot of these doubles uh, where there, <clears throat> excuse me, where there is not a porch, where the two doors have been closed up and it, there's simply a sign and tastefully done, thankfully, in most cases, with an arrow pointing to the other door, is there is, is there a problem? I mean, is there a reason that that end of the porch really needs to be closed off rather than just leaving it open, letting them use the entire porch and making it clear that the front door of the house is on the right side? With you know, we that's not appropriate. We think that you know the aesthetic reasons are there, and that's we we'll stand by those. I would argue that's very appropriate. I mean, it's it, it's the simplest solution, but I, I, as I say, I'm I'm okay with the other solution. I, I mean, the issue would be, I mean, it, I think obviously to us, we think it's aesthetically pleasing to do it the way we're doing. We think it improves the the uh, not only the appearance of the house, but the resale value of the house. And uh, I don't think a sign pointing to the door would, would do those. Those goals. Well, let, let me let me make my starting point of this clear. The most appropriate thing for the house is to leave it the way it is, to replace the the steps with cut limestone steps, which are more appropriate or more appropriate material given the nature of the house. But the most appropriate thing is just to leave everything else exactly the way it is. The, here, here. The the points that are. The, the point at which we try to start, and that is to say yes to people, in, in my mind, is to get rid of the middle rail, which I, I understand why you would want to get rid of it, and mm -hmm. I have a problem with. Getting rid of the steps, I don't personally have a huge problem with, but that does create the problem of the railing, and, and that's got to have a more sensitive solution and a more appropriate solution than just continuing the rail. Can I ask the applicant? Um, you've heard the commission's interpretation of the standards. Um, throwing aside the the examples you provided, what is your interpretation of the standards? My interpretation of the standards. Let me look at my notes here. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the, uh, for instance, three one one six point one one, says every reasonable effort should be made to use the property for its originally intended purpose. I mean, I think everybody believes that if that means that we have to keep it as a duplex, you know, we we don't have to do that. Uh, and as far as the other. <laughs> Part number two, one of the things it says is the removal of alteration of any historic material or distinctive architectural features. Well, I think we can all say that we're not talking about any materials here in this situation. Uh, and we also, and, and the, you think you're saying that the steps and the continuous rail, railings are, are distinguishing characteristics of the, of the, 
of the House, and we just disagree. Uh, so you do not believe that the symmetrical nature no. of the House is a significant historic feature? No, I think that's that's an issue that we, we'd be happy to argue. When you look around the you know, look around the uh, the village. No, I don't. Of this house, is exactly. that a significant historical architecture feature that it's sustainable or it's symmetrical? That's what your, your yeah. argument is. Well, I, I I like to I like to look at these from the standard standpoint. I mean, I think that the well that'll to, that'll take place. I'm sure to to the to the to the <laughs> to the um, points that others made. We don't have the full story to understand what the standards were when those other applications were made. Uh, and it would be an interesting, but long, long process to figure that out, um, obviously, but as the standards exist now, I'm of the opinion that. The symmetrical nature of this broad building is. A historic architectural feature, and I can't deny that myself. I would also say that the fact that the standards have changed over time. Is as I think Jay put it, it's a reflection that commissions have realized errors in the past. Because I, I know for a fact that just Abraham Lincoln's house in the 70s, they thought it was appropriate to demolish all the Queen Anne mansions that were built in the 1880s all around his house because it was not from the era of the original Lincoln house. Uh, today, that would never happen. So for the sake of time and for the applicant, um, would you like us to vote on the application as submitted? Yes. Would you like to maybe, okay. Yes, I have a question though. Uh, uh, Commissioner Thiel said, uh, made a comment about being outside of his boundary. I know this, that was in a different application. What, is, what does that mean? There is a, I'm outside, it's outside of my boundary so I can talk. On this, that's what he wanted. That's what he said. Yeah. So any property within 125 square feet of my property, I have to recuse myself from. Okay. And that that's the standard. That's, that's the it. law. That's, that's the law. Is. That's not not that's the law. Standard. Okay. That's the law. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was right. that a clarifying question, or do you think there's an issue on this particular? No, I just wanted to know what that okay. meant. Gotcha. Thank you. I know. I knew. I know. Commissioner Ferriel is nearby, but I'm assuming he's outside that range. According to the map that I have, yes, it's just outside my range. Just outside. You have how far outside? Generally, but every generally when a commissioner comes, let me just talk about this for a second. Generally, when a commissioner comes on board, they run a a Franklin County auditor's map indicating to indicate which properties fall within 125 feet. It generates a list of addresses and it also generates a, a map that shows exactly what where the limits are. If you're if it's if it's on the list, you can't vote on it. If it's outside of the list, you can vote on it. And I'm right now looking looking at the map that was supplied and it is outside the 125 foot perimeter. I looked at it last time this house was uh was on the agenda. Thank you. All right. If there are no further questions or comments, okay. can I just make yeah, hold on for for say, Anthony? I just want to make some make something clear because we usually do, and and the answer you got was very quick. I just want to make sure that the the applicant takes advantage of what is always offered to people. You can have us vote on the application as has been submitted. You can choose to modify the application at the table, changing one or any of the characteristics of the application as it has been submitted, and we can vote on it that way. The commission cannot make any changes to your application. You have to do that. So that, that was the full meaning of Anthony's question. I just want to make sure that that didn't get passed by. That's understood. No, that's understood. Okay. Thank you. Fine. Sorry, Anthony. You're fine. So for the applicant, he wants to vote on the application as submitted, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? 
The motion on agenda item number 11 GV 21 dash 06 dash 05 07 45 dash 747 6 application as submitted by the applicant. Second. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? Hearing none, we'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer. Nay. Commissioner Durst. Nay. Commissioner Thiel. Nay. Commissioner Theriel. Nay. Commissioner McCoy. Nay. Commissioner Foley. Nay. Chair votes nay as well. Uh, nays have it. Motion's denied. Uh, so Thank you. you. For the applicant, you have several uh, methods of appeal. Do you need those explained to you, or are you aware of those? Uh, I think I'm generally aware of them, but why don't you explain them on the record too? Sure. So you can come back uh, to the commission for a rehearing. Uh, you can go to the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals and appeal there. Um, Board, and, sorry, uh, Anthony, Board of Commission. Commission Appeals. Commission Appeals, yeah. my, my apologies. Uh, and a third third route, uh, that's going to the city, correct? And go to another route. Yeah. What's the third route? I didn't hear that. You can go directly to the, the, the city council. Okay. Um, and Jack can provide you more information about those routes if you need those. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, we need to read into into the uh, ruling the code sections, Jacqueline. Um. Yeah. If you, I think we, it might be good just to restate them, just so everything's very clear. One second. So I'm looking at thirty one sixteen dot eleven. In that regard, subsection two indicates that the distinguishing characteristics of the property shall not shall not be restored, shall not be destroyed. <laughs> uh, that changes which have taken place over the course of time are evidence of the property's history and environment, and these changes may have acquired significance in their own right. And if so, the significance shall be respected. I'd say that's in reference to the concrete steps. In subsection five, it's that the distinctive stylistic features and examples of craftsmanship that characterize a property shall be treated with sensitivity. So those those seem to me to refer to the symmetrical appearance of the uh, of the structure, which would be impaired by removing the stairs and changing the railing. I think it was Karen who quoted some sections of our guidelines also that were the point here. Yes, page. We voted, excuse me, I get more water. It's really dry here. <laughs> yeah, and I, had, I, hadn't, I hadn't found the sections that referred to uh, doubles. I've got 68, page 68 and 67, yeah. porches and stoops. Mm -hmm. And then Jacqueline, on, on the code side, uh, under 316.11, uh, item 12. Uh, which is the and pass upon appropriateness. The commission shall shall commit or co consider um, st style, general design, arrangement um, of the feature involved in relation to the architectural features of other contributing properties in the immediate neighborhood. So, yeah, but uh, bullet twelve applies as well. And the architectural characteristics mm -hmm. typical of structures in the district and of course the distinguishing one of the distinguishing features of this house is the porch okay all right we'll move on to the next item on the agenda excuse me i forgot i i, I was muted there for a second i'm sorry are we with those last items they were Guideline pages, or what? What were those last items you were talking about? City code. 
City code? 31, 31.16.11. I've got that. But is there any, and then you talked about page 67 and page 68 of the guidelines. Is there anything else besides that that we're basing our decision on? Well, it was 68 and 69. Mm -hmm. uh, page 68 and 67 is 67 is a picture of uh, <laughs> uh, a sign suggesting you should scoop your poop. Okay, <laughs> we'll always do that. So, so we're talking about 68 and 69 of the guidelines. Well, in reference Correct. to porches and stoops, okay. should be preserved in their historic forms. And, of course, removing steps is, even though they're not the historic steps, I, is I just, preserve, I just, not preserving the historic form of the porch. I just want to make sure I have the, the universe of, the, of what you're basing the decision on. And so it's 31, 16, 11. Those, that's section 1, 2, 5, 6, 10, and 12, as cited in the, uh, in the staff report. And then page 68 and 69 of the guideline. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Jeff and Gallo, you need? Yes, thank you. Thank you. All right. We will move ahead to item number 12, GV 21 06 051, 254 Sycamore Street. I believe I saw Mr. Knitter on the call earlier. Yes, sir. All right, looking for your camera. Don't see it yet. Oh, I see Mr. Green. There we go. Please raise your right hand. Yep. And Mr. Knitter, raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Please state your names for the record. John I'll Knitter. Kyle Green. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. Okay, this application is proposing to remove three sets of existing brick piers in poor condition, removing existing brick wall at a parking area also in poor condition, removing existing landscaping in the front yard, installing a new wood fence along the rear half of 6th Street and a parking area including a new trash enclosure, and installing a new raw iron fence on Sycamore and the front half of 6th Street with new landscaping to be in front. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked if the existing gate was proposed to be reused or if a new gate would be added and how the gates will be attached. The applicant has submitted updated materials to clarify that the existing iron gates will be removed and replaced with a new iron gate on Sycamore Street and two wood gates uh, that will be added to the wood fence along South 6th Street. The design of the fence along Sycamore has been altered to have a lattice screen on top to better transition to the lower wrought iron fence. So staff recommends approval as revised with any clarifications to be submitted to staff prior to issuance of a certificate. And that is based on the standards for site improvements, letters A and B. All right, thank you, Jacqueline. Does the applicant have anything else to add? Uh, I'll just say that the um, the uh, the new portion of the wood fence, it, it, it does have the, the lattice um, on, on top, but we would maintain the same um, match the existing wood fence in terms of the the uh, actual fence fence boards and posts and post caps that are already there. So it would, it's all going to look um, the same, with the exception of um, that lattice on top. All right. Questions, comments from the commission. Is is the lattice an approved fence style? It's really not. I mean, it's not anything that I that I recall as ever having approved. <clears throat> yeah, for wood fences, you typically see the one with the the horizontals at the top and the bottom, and the and the verticals in between, right? Yeah, that's the kind of standard. Yeah, I'm trying to think of whether we've ever approved a lattice, and I. Actually, if you look at the one picture, they have the typical picture A to B. It kind of shows the fence we typically approve, right? On what page are you? Uh, it's A to B. I'm on page 17 if you're on the application. 
if I'm not mistaken, the fence that's on the right picture there, it doesn't look like it's the applicant's fence. It's the typical it's fence. Typical fence. fence. Page seven. Yeah, that's not that's not on our property, but it it, it does match the existing um, fence that you can see in the background of that photo. Uh, um, on the other picture, that is okay. our, yeah. So it is um, of the same style as what we already have on site. Gotcha. That's, that's what, the one with the boards going all the way up. Yeah. Yes. And, and in fact, the other. The other type that we've approved um, actually uses, um, I, I think we've approved metal bars at the top. I'm trying to think of where. And I'm blanking on it, but the, the lattice, I don't recall us having approved. The verticals are the most common one. This is John Kinnear. I'm fine with that. That's that's okay. Solves that problem. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. So the the question that I that I have, and and I think I'm okay with it. I just think that it's worth talking about is where the wood fence starts. Um. So it starts just beyond, just behind the first window, correct? Yes. Yeah, and so the um, you know the reason that it's located there, the, the intention is with with the new fence there is to uh, it's a this is a duplex or a double, and it's to create a a, a little private area for the residents in the front um, who don't have one at the moment. And so we offset it back um, in between some existing brick planters that are on the along the side entry shown on the site plan. And also um, without getting in the way of it, the existing vision triangle on the on the corner. Um, so sort of set th those are sort of our boundaries there is, is the location. I just want to make sure we're staying away from the windows and and the sills. That, that's, that's my Okay. And, I, and we don't, I don't think we have an elevation that, that shows that and it's, I, I'm inferring it. Okay. Uh, sheet 11, Jay. I was going to say sheet A8 um, was a. I'll oh, forget okay. it. It's on sheet 11. Yeah, Ned, you got it right there. Thank you. Turn the lattice into pickets and I'm fine. My only I walked by it the other day and, and I was struggling with the, the concept of is double. So the side door is really a front door. And putting a taller fence in front of the front door, I think the fact that you're getting all that front yard space around in the corner with the iron fence, I think that has me over the edge of being okay with this. I don't think you really realize that's a that's a secondary entrance for another unit on the side. Yeah, yeah. Took me a long time to figure that out walking the dog. And I believe the previous application materials showing just the solid fence without the lattice is a little bit below. So Noel, if you could scroll down a bit, we can take a look and just have that visual up in front of us. I'm sorry, Jacqueline, which one again? Sheet 24. 24. Thanks. Um, Thank you. It's backed off the front window a little bit, though. Yeah, based on our comments um, or your comments at the business meeting. Yeah, I think backing off and lowering the, you know, giving it some transparency up near the top. <laughs> helps quite a yeah. bit. I think the gate though, that small gate shown with the high wood fence um, seems out of place. You know, uh, sheet 12. Well, I'm seeing it on um, this elevation on A24 too. 
Yeah, but that's on a, the perspective. A twenty four. Yeah. Yeah, we've also we we've uh, replaced the the uh, an iron gate on that on that yeah. side with a wood more appropriate with the wood okay. fence on the side. Um, we did keep it lower. Um, as high as sort of the vertical portion. I know we're getting rid of the lattice now, but um, because that is sort of a, an entry and, and um, you know, we didn't want Yeah, you wanted to mark it, yeah. Right. I think maybe one sheet before this might show in the, the elevation, flat elevation. There you go. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I don't know. It looks odd to me to jump that gate down that far. But... So is the on the return where the fence hits the house, you're not proposing to have you're having a short fence right up against the house? Well, this is similar. So, so sorry, similar situation is as there would be a gate there into the um Oh, so that's a gate. Yeah, if, um on the let's see. Yeah, on the site plan um you can see that, that there's a little um uh, private area there for that resident um separate from the the you know, the resident in the back of the space. So um, yeah, there'd be a gate there, but I, I think, I don't want to speak for John, but I think if, if it's more appropriate to have a, the gate full size is like the, like the fences, I think we would be perfectly fine doing that. I think it's more appropriate to have the gate, the full size. If you want more transparency in the gate, I'm okay with that, but I just Sorry. think that you lose that continuity. It, it looks odd to make it so low. Yeah, I'm good either way. Yep. I think that's something we can do. And I have a question about the wrought iron fence going out front. Um, so you're removing the original wrought iron gate. You're putting in all new wrought iron uh, along the front and the side. What type of fence are you putting in there? I didn't see any details about that wrought iron fence. I think what the the um, there's a photo on a five of the neighbor's fence um, right at our property, um, and I think our intention was to can, um, continue that similar style. Is that correct, John? Yes. Yep. So that second photo from the left there is a photo from the prop from the adjacent property and at the corner where it meets um, John's property. Um, I, I just can, wanted to clarify. Yeah. Just want to clarify because the the rendering showed it significantly shorter. I want to make sure that was not the intent. Oh no. Um, okay. Yeah. Can I, I hate to editorialize, John, but and and I rare you'll rarely hear me say this, but you really don't want to do that. <laughs> that really? Yeah. Well, that's an historic that's an historic fence that isn't made anymore, and and in order to get a fence like that, I mean, mm -hmm. really like that. You're going to have to find somebody to buy it off of because it, I mean, there are fences like it, but there are, there are, I mean, there are fences that are reminiscent of it, but they aren't that fence. Gotcha. Gotcha. A, okay. a much, a, a simpler wrought iron fence would be a much, much easier road to go down. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. For that. Yeah. Thank you. Is that something that we can submit? Um, to staff or conditional information? Um, I guess, are you looking to have the, the finials? You're looking to have, I mean, there's a couple of different options with the fences that you could have. You have kind of what's shown in the original, like in the, in the fence there, you have kind of the half height pickets as opposed to just the full height pickets. You have the finials on top versus your straight post top versus the schoolhouse top. I think we probably want to see what that fence is going to be. That's probably a quick approval. I'm just not sure we can send it to site to, to staff for approval or not. Okay. Understood. 
Yeah, and it's probably about it's probably about three feet tall, maybe mm -hmm. maybe a little mm -hmm. more than three feet tall. But I think if we if we can approve the rest of the application, I think we can improve the concept of an iron fence. We just need to see what the iron fence is going to be before that can go through. Okay. Okay. And can uh, was it possible to to uh, vote on the demolition portion um, at this keeping that separate? of the um the brick piers and the wrought iron gate and the brick wall at the rear of the site i think that can all be part of this approval application mm -hmm. i think okay. we don't have a problem with the iron fence it's just okay. what iron fence so got, got it, it. Um, and then from the commission is there any thoughts on do we want to try to save the iron gate one of the iron gates or are we just going to say we get a new fence just get all new gate I'm fine with a, with a new iron gate to match the new iron fence put that way. Um, that uh, that gate and pier assembly is, I mean, somebody probably found a gate somewhere and mm -hmm. stuck it in a bunch of brick, and that was the end of it. It, it is, it has no, at, at least as far as I could ever tell, it has no bearing on anything historic on that site. I know the two gates are different styles, so you're probably correct. Okay. All right, that's all my questions. Anything else? All right. Uh, I guess the I guess the the best approach here uh, is how would I do this? Um, so just have the applicant remove the fence from the application and we can vote on it. Now, then I'll have to come back and get as a different application for the fence. I mean, either that or we can split it and continue and all that, but either way. For the applicant, for the applicant is, is demolition of those peers, is that crucial now or is that something that we can wait until the fence gets approved? Uh, it would be nice, but it, it's not, not that big a deal. Well, the wood, but you're going to be removing uh, pier is where the wood fence is as well. Yes, true enough. Mm -hmm. It would be nice to do it all at once, of course. Yeah. So can, can we just say style of the rod iron fence to be submitted to permission for approval? Yeah, that works. Good call, Ned. I was thinking too complicated. That's good. All right, if there more questions, is there a motion? Item 12, GV 210651254 Second War Street. I move to approve as amended by the applicant full height fence, full height gates. Broad iron fence is acceptable, designed to be submitted at a future commission meeting. Is there a second? Second. 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 <laughs> Any questions on the motion? No. Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Commissioner Thiel. Aye. Commissioner Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley. Aye. All right. Uh, Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Chair, uh, with apologies, I need to uh, log off. Thank you all for the evening. Uh, apologies. All right, we'll move on to item 13, GV-21-06-052, 639 Mohawk Street. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think I need to recuse myself based on location. Thank you. Be safe. Applicant, Mr. Leonard, I believe. Yep. Uh, if you please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Will Lanert. Jacqueline. Okay. This application is proposing at the front yard to remove existing plantings, uh, limestone steps and brick pathway, and to add a new clay mold brick pathway with a herringbone pattern. 18 inch tall limestone retaining wall, new limestone steps to match the existing steps, 
um, adding a new raw iron gate and plantings, and at the rear yard to remove existing concrete paver patio and edging, add a new bluestone patio with limestone cobble edging, six foot cedar trellis, cedar window boxes on the east garage windows, and a new painted cedar fence and gate on the south and west property line with the fence style to match the existing. Mm -hmm. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked that the gate location be made clear on the site plan and asked for more information about the newels, whether they are cut stone or cast iron, and noted that typically round top gates are not recommended and that the gates appear more decorative than what is typically approved. So new features and alterations should be simple in design to avoid a faux historic look and to be compatible with the historic surroundings. The applicant has submitted a revised front gate design and stating that the gate down the street was inspired inspired the approach to the gate as being proposed and that the proposed, proposed new walls will be wrought iron in material. So staff recommends approval with the condition that the gate at the primary entrance be simple in design and that is based on the standards for alteration number three and standards for site improvement letters A and B. All right, thank you very much. Applicant, anything else to add? Yes, sir. All right, commission, questions, comments? I think the comments from the the meeting stand. I, I the the wrought iron posts and the curved top gate are um, well. Let me back up for a second. One of the things to remember about this property is that it is comprised of an historic and a new that may not be immediately relevant, uh, immediately um, revealed. The house, the, the view west from Mohawk sidewalk, uh, the building on the left is a new build that is probably, what is it, 15 years old-ish. Um, the, the building on the right, which is kind of on the right side, uh, the view from the southwest on Mohawk, that was the the um, original cottage on this property, and that uh, it, it's my belief that that the uh, appropriate aesthetic is to relate back to the simplicity of the cottage on the property. Um, and this only has to do with the front. This doesn't have to do with 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 the backyard, obviously. Um, that it is appropriate to. Uh, keep this absolutely no more ornate than it has been, um, which I think in in reality was somewhat over ornate to begin with. But making it more ornate is, I I believe, wholly inappropriate to the historic fabric. I would I would make the comment of looking at the the example on the last sheet of the the rounded top gate um, with the uh, iron posts pointing to this the six three seven Mohawk gates example that, that structure is a it's a whole different class of structure architecturally speaking um, that's I don't think that's an applicable standard to try to follow, in my opinion. I would agree with Jay's, to Jay's point. Um, I think that the, the brick piers that are there in the first place are probably more than what I have would have approved in the past. Um, kind of they, go simple they, were, they were existing. They were existing. Okay. Happening. Those, the, those brick piers were put in probably in the 1970s. Why they got there. Um, but not not opposed to replacing a gate, but I don't think going more ornate is is the answer. We were trying to um, create a little bit more mass there because of the brick piers are so um, heavy um, and the adjacent wall retaining brick retaining walls. It just kind of feels like it falls apart visually. We're trying to add a little bit more um compositional um heaviness in the middle between the the two brick piers but i also understand exactly what you're what you're saying 
would this commission be opposed to um, a little bit of an arch um, with the pretty much the exact gate? You know, finials and, and everything else, but have have an arch of any kind, or is or is that not appropriate? I think the the, the finial little, I'll say the, the crown piece of it, I, I don't think is, in my opinion, appropriate. Um, I have to see what was being proposed. Sure. I think a, a little bit of an accent, I think, might be acceptable, but I have to see it in actuality. It's already pretty. I mean, it. So this is this is a little tricky. Um, if the existing posts stayed and the gate as shown was put in with the arch but without the scroll work at the top or the finial, right? I would find I would be much more comfortable with it. That's why I was figuring you we were. That's what I was freaking figuring I would propose if we were to if we were to propose propose anything. Um, you yeah, know, remove any sort of decorate decorative ironwork. Um, just try to simplify the curve and keep the post as they are today and upgrade the gate. But we'll have to draw we'll have to draw that up for your review. And I think generally speaking, I've seen fences in the village that are just a, a simple picket top fence, but the top rail incorporates a bit of a curve, nothing yeah. drastic. So I, I think there are some examples of appropriate, a little bit extra that's still keeping it simple. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, I designed a house next door um, uh, to the north, and um, that that's the condition there. Um, but it, it's 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 very uh, it's a subtle subtle curve it's not a it's not very um it's not much different than the than the, than the face the face of the fence yeah so I, I, mo moving inward or onward um the steps are being replaced so all of the steps are being replaced correct everything but the the stoop itself um that connects to the to the the house. Okay, because th th that was another thing about this project that I think was a bit of a fail, and that is using the bullnosed steps. Um, I, I, you know, they should, to my mind, they should have been plain square limestone steps the way you see elsewhere in the village. And right, it, this started again. It started. You know, it started celebrating the entry to the new house and mm -hmm. trying to forget about the historic fabric of the cottage adjacent to it. And it should have been should have aired to the simple side. I think what you've done, um, actually, I like because it gets the it gets the entry to the new house over by the new house, and it, and it, I hopefully lets the cottage play a little bit better on its own rather than having that one step there that. Never really worked very well. Commissioner McCoy, anything on the uh, landscaping? I have nothing, Dad. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Um, sorry, one last thing. I assume that all of the paving is dry lit you know, on a compacted stone base rather than concrete. You're correct. Thank you. We likely will have a masonry base underneath the steps. Um, uh, if you don't want that, then uh, let me no, know. No, underneath the steps is not. I mean, the steps aren't going to be porous anyway, so it doesn't make that big a difference. But 
I mean, okay. if actually, what I've seen most successfully used is dry pack underneath underneath the steps rather than poured. But to be clear, the the proposed step steps in the front yard, the, you would want to remove the bull nose and have a, a more of a smooth uh, slab yeah. style. You, step. Well, usually what you what you would see on all the steps throughout the village are, right. are you know, full depth limestone. Yeah, I mean, ten by. I think, we, I think we could do that. I mean, there's only one step that we're going to keep, and then the rest have to be fabricated. And I think we should just we should we should do what's appropriate. So yeah, um, I'm thinking limestone. Um, just a monolithic step for for all the steps. I, I don't think I'm. I don't know what you what this commission thinks about a change in step to the stoop. You know, stu the existing stoop is bull nosed. I know. Um, I suppose we could replace that as well. I'd have to talk to the client about that. <laughs> but um, I I agree that um, maybe we should. There is one step we're trying to retain. Uh, to, to keep, and maybe we should just get rid of it and um, have, have all the steps look the same as much as we can. I I would look at that. I'll, I'm going to throw out something else here that I would I would suggest you look at, but it, it's certainly not a deal breaker for me. And that is the width of these steps is really big. Um. You know, it, it has always been a, a celebration of brickwork out there um, at the, um, you know, I, know, I don't know exactly how wide they are, but, you know, comfortably, comfortably, comfortably two people walking side by side in five feet is as much as anyone ever needs. Uh, and I think these things are probably a good six feet wide. I think there are more. They may be more. Yeah, they're six, six feet eight. There, oh, they're six feet eight. Six feet eight inches. Yeah, I mean, that, that, we can, that we I can pull that really... in. Like, we can we can pull that mm -hmm. in a little bit. It just seems like it would geometrically constrain a little bit, you know, as it presents the existing stoop. Um. Yeah, as they are now, they're too skinny and it it, it really looks awkward. Uh, so we're trying to react to that. There's an existing step there that is six foot eight. So, so we're working with that step that's already on site. So. Fine. As I say, it was not a deal breaker. It it just it it's an awful lot of path going. You know, you're you're going from from a narrow gate to a narrow door with this really, really wide path. Mm -hmm. The path where it makes the bit, you know, the path, the first path where you enter is kind of a, a comfortable width. The second path after you make the left-hand turn is of a comfortable path. Then all of a sudden you go into this really, really wide path. It seems a little bit out of place, but. We were hoping to soften that considerably with planter pots, but. I, yeah, I, I, I well, mm -hmm. either way. That's it for me. Any other questions or comments? So, in regards to the to the front fence gate, um, would you like to come back with another option there? Yes, and it's it's the my solution is going to. Look, it's the it's going to look exactly <laughs> as it does today with the same with the same posts, and a, probably match a, a, a cur the curve of the gate next door or some something very similar. So, not much change. Is that would that be staff approvable? Or would I have to present that to the commission? I think with that one, Jacqueline. I think we have enough information to, to staff prove that one since just the gate. 
Yeah, you're just matching the, well, possibly matching the adjacent fencing. Yeah, the final gate selection to go to staff. I'm talking about Tim and Gina and G's house to the, just to, to the north, so. Okay, uh, and then as far as the steps, did you want to amend your application to have, to remove the bullnose, just have the straight cut? I love that. I think we should do that. Let's amend it. It's, I, I, I don't like what's there. <laughs> I think it would look a lot better. The way Jay I don't think it was what was on the original application to be perfect. I don't, I don't really recall, but I had, I, I remember seeing them and kind of going, oh, I don't, don't remember that. But yeah, there were, there were a lot of issues with that house, including it having been built 18 inches too tall at first. Oh, really? They literally, had, they literally had to come in with a crane and lift it up off of its foundations, cut 18 inches off, and then lower it back down. Matt, did you want to did you want to mention anything with the the front walk at all, width wise? You want to leave it as is. You know, what? I'd like to leave it as is, and I will constrain it if if I. And if I do, would I just emit um, some resubmit that? That would be a staff. To make it narrow mm -hmm. would be a staff thing. Okay. I, I we, think we just had we had to, we had to play with it at the office a little bit. But yeah. I think I think we we'll, we'll try our best to get that as skinny as we can. Okay. All, All right. right. No more questions or or co or comments. Is there a motion? Jay, I'm looking at you. I've really been trying to avoid. <laughs> I've been trying to avoid this. Agenda item uh, 13, GV 21-06-052, to approve the application as amended by the owner to simplify the uh, to to let the gate posts at the front of the house remain, uh, to simplify the design of. Uh, the gate itself submit to staff to replace the bullnose steps with full depth limestone steps. Um, the width of the path to remain as is if it becomes uh, if the applicant chooses to make it narrower, they can submit that to staff as well. Uh, just a clarification that all um, paving materials be dry laid. <laughs> With the exception of steps that can be um, dry pack mortar. Any or we have a second. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Theos recused. Commissioner Ferial. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Commissioner Foley is left. Chair votes aye. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to item 14, which is GV, oops, close it. GV dash 21 06 053 277 East Livingston Avenue. We have an applicant for 277 East Livingston. Uh, that's me. All right, please raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, my name is uh, Francis Heath. I'm the operations manager for uh, the Bendy Walking Grill location. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Yes. Okay, so this application is proposing to install a new wall sign and replacement face and a projecting sign. At the May business meeting, the commission asked if all brackets proposed to be used are existing and requested a Google Street View or context photos. The commission noted that typically two signs are not recommended for one elevation. However, the location of the building and existing signs may be okay. The commission noted that the awning appears to have been already replaced. So the applicant and staff have confirmed that the brackets were previously existing and the brackets and signage appear on photos dating from the 1990s and possibly before. Uh, so the staff recommendation is to recommend approval of the application as submitted with any clarifications be submitted to staff. 
uh, with the condition that any new signage be affixed via existing brackets or through mortar and avoiding drilling into any masonry. And the basis for the staff recommendation uh, is the general standards for alteration and standards for site improvements, which the application is generally consistent with. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, applicant, have anything else to add? Uh, no, except for the um, the signage that's next to the awning already has uh, brackets that are already in the actual brick that were from the previous sign from the uh, Happy Dragon that was located there before. We'll probably just use the existing already uh, brackets that are in the brick. Unless the sign company submitted anything else. Gotcha. Questions, comments from the commission? big is that sign? Say again, Jay, you broke up. Sorry, uh, two, two, never mind. I answered my own question. Forget it. All right. If there's no questions or comments, is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I'm <clears throat> item number 14, GV 2106053277 East Livingston. I move to approve as submitted. Second. Any questions on the motion? Take the vote, Commissioner Panzer. Jay, you're muted. Aye. Commissioner Durst. Aye. Mr. Thiel. Aye. Mr. Ferriel. Aye. Commissioner McCoy. Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. You guys have a nice night. Two. All right. We'll go on to item 15, uh, GV 21 06 054, 262 East Sycamore Street. We have applicant for 262 East Sycamore. Third call for applicant Hi. for. Oh, oh there we go. Please Hi. raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Jennifer Stevens. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. Mm -hmm. All right, Jacqueline. This application is proposing to install a new projecting sign and new vinyl or painted window signs. So at the May DVC business meeting, the commission noted the signage on the interior face of the building may be considered as graphics as opposed to extra signage as long as it consists of graphics language. So staff notes that the window graphics do appear to repeat, repeat some information with both the cafe hours and the morning, afternoon, evening graphic being proposed. Uh, the applicant notes that the existing arm that the sign hangs from will need to be replaced due to it not meeting current engineering specifications and the new fixture will be mounted in the same location at the same angle as the current fixture. So staff recommends approving the application with conditions and the conditions being uh, to reduce the duplication of information in the window graphics and that any new brackets or fixtures be attached either through existing openings or through mortar and not via masonry. And that the basis for the staff recommendation is the standards for site improvements, letter C, uh, which uh, are in relation to signage. All right, does the applicant have anything else to add? The only thing to add since we last shared this about a month ago was there was a, a sycamore name over top of the uh, diamond hanging sign and that was actually removed. So that means no longer repeating. If that was an issue, it's not there anymore. Um, that is the only thing that's changed. Yep. Questions, comments from the commission? You can't hang the sign this way. Sorry to tell you. Um, it, can you go to page four, please? Uh, um, Sorry, my page four is different than this. Next page. Oh. 
Well, something's disappeared. Now, it's page four. It just isn't showing up on the screen. There you go. The bracket that's been drawn is a very nice little bracket that shows going through a single course of brick in the corner. The, the way these houses are built, that brick wall is at least eight inches thick, if not more, and it's probably more. Uh, it's probably 10 to 14 inches thick, um, which means that those plates where they turn down the sides of, of the building are going to be like that in order to get bolts into the interior of, of the space. You're going to have to go through the first layer of brick, the airspace, and then the second layer of brick before you get to the back of the wall, which means that plate is going to become enormous. Um, it's also going to be anchored at a location. You really don't want to anchor a plate because the, the I don't know if you can picture this, but the, the point at which the pole comes out from that bracket is going to be more than a foot away from where the anchors go into the wall. Point being, you got a problem here that you need that you need to solve. That's probably why the wires, why the the existing sign on the corner is guyed up, um, in order to support the front edge of it. But you, you, what you'd find out very quickly is that you can't support it the way it's being drawn. Jay, I also wonder whether the existing bracket is itself historic, even though the sign is not. That's that's a really good question because that um, I mean I don't know whether it's it's been there a really 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 long time. Yep. We we have no problem using the existing arm and bracket. It was actually our preference. We were just told that engineerically it would not get approved. So if there has to be a um, stamp added to the sign package before it goes in front of the city of Columbus, that um, <laughs> it, it wouldn't, it would not get approved. So we're sort of between a rock and a hard place here. And the current sign is hanging at an angle. Um, I don't yep. know if it would change. I do know we have to go through the brick inside and stabilize it on the inside. That's something we're up for. Uh, I guess if it's not hanging at an angle, does that change? I, I don't. I don't want to ask you for a solve, but when I think about the pause around the bracket being too large, does that come because it's at an angle, or because of the amount that you're drilling through? It, it's that... because it's because of the distance. That you have to go back. What you're showing is you're showing the, the drawing in the lower left hand corner of the page is showing very nicely going through one brick really close to the corner. The reality is that that picture that wall being a whole nother brick wide on both sides. So now the bolts mm -hmm. need to move farther and farther away from the corner. And as you move farther and farther away from the corner, a that bar that that plate on the outside has to get longer but also be huge you're gonna have to talk to the engineers i mean the, the guy who engineers this is gonna have to come to that realization you're you're putting a force on those connections mm -hmm. in a really bad way mm -hmm. um, so the building we just looked at where the uh, previous happy dragon was their sign was coming out from the side of the building it wasn't at an angle it was just through, is that as a solve if we just make this um, front and back facing um, sycamore rather than not at the corner? If it's I, not trying to wrap the corner, does that help so that those bolts are, you know? I, I think that, that there's, uh, that's a really good question. Um, from an engineering perspective, um, I think it makes the the problem a little simpler to deal with because you move away from the corner. You don't try to do it quite so tight to the corner. You mm -hmm. pull it onto the front of the building. But I think that um, what Commissioner Ferriel was talking about becomes, and, and, and probably even before we get there, is a real issue. And that is whether the, you know, whether what you really need to be doing is 
replicating in a responsible engineering manner the suspension method um, of the sign that's there. Mm -hmm. If it is truly not, you know, if it can't be immediate, then it, you know, you need mm -hmm. an engineer to tell us that it's got to, that it's got to go, and probably you need to put back what's there. Jeff, did I capture your sentiments? The, the current sign is hanging from that current arm. It just looks like we're, we're the, the sign guys were nervous that it was going to basically fall on someone when they walked by. Now, it looked really <laughs> rigged. It looked rigged to us. Um, that, that would be bad. It, 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 he, he was very nervous. And when we originally had the sycamore name above it, everything we're making this out of it's light enough but he was he was worried and we said okay now that we just have the s in the diamond can we reuse the existing arm and he came back and said no hmm. now yeah. that's his opinion he hasn't asked yet but i don't know if if this case does um well it, it might be a matter of reinforcing the you know the connections of the existing uh, of the existing arm as well Sorry, and I don't know whether I doubt it or not here, but and I don't know that that bracket just is away. historic. I don't know that that bracket is historic. I'm thinking it probably is, but I don't know. That's on the. I think um, I had a cover page. I don't know if that made it, but it's the first or second page. I do have a photo of it. The current sign. Yep. Yeah. The question is, what was there 50 years ago? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we, we would be delighted to use the current arm. It's just a matter of how to make it work. Um, in terms of the design of what we're proposing, I wanted to make sure that that is okay. And then just next steps uh, toward uh, getting getting their sign fabricated and, and made, just making sure that I understand what has to be done. Yeah. I think, you've, I think you've got an engineering problem, not a not a problem with design or anything, or or appearance or anything. Any anybody against the, the sign as designed as the, the sign itself? No. I think we agree on the sign. I think it just comes down to that how you mount it. Okay. So, if you'd like, we could we could approve the sign as designed. Uh, we, we can't approve the mounting as shown. Um, if you need that approval now, we could do that, and we could come back later for the the mounting. Um, the other option is we just table the whole, uh, continue the whole application next month. If you if you don't need the sign approved right now. You've got us on the record verbally stating that we have no problem with the signage, so we're not going to go back and say no. Um, I think it just comes down to that that mounting. How would you like us to proceed? I would love to have the sign approved. If we are able to use the existing arm, is that something I'd have to come back and let you know that it's been approved and fastened tighter so it doesn't fall off the side of the building, or can we just go ahead and install the sign as is? If you can use the existing arm with no real modifications replacing guy wires is fine but if you need to like beef it up or or put on angles and stuff mm -hmm. you want to see that first or you drill into the brick as... in any way yeah got it if you, you can reuse it as is then you're good to go okay thank you yes that would be great uh just because of timing knowing they want to open up um in about the next four to six weeks if we could get approval on the design today and then we'll make the call based on what happens with the Engineers. So ju just for our, so we can make sure we're following the proper protocol, uh, just please confirm you're requesting that we amend your application to remove the new bracket and to, to use the current bracket instead. <laughs> All the signage remains the same as what you've submitted, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, is there a motion? Um. Mr. Chairman, with respect to uh, item number 
GV-21-06-054-262-2021-0001. Um, I move to approve the application as amended to retain the existing bracket, but with the new sign as submitted in the application. Second. Any questions on the motion? I'll take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferriel? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for all Would your- Would it be appropriate for us? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Ms. Stevens. We appreciate it. Thank you. Would it be appropriate to take five at this point? I, I'd be okay with that. Five minutes. Yeah. It's only been three hours. I gotta feed the dog. Thank you.
Yellow. I think we are. Commission's all back. Forced to take a bite of food. All right, uh, we're back on. We are moving to item number 16, GV 21 06 055 710 714 South 5th Street. So we got Juliet there. Um, if anybody who is going to be speaking will please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, Juliet Bullock. Okay. Jacqueline? Okay. This application is proposing uh, a use change and converting the existing duplex to a single family residence as well as new construction, and that would be to construct a new detached garage. The applicant would like to add a new porch or small addition at the rear. And as far as exterior alterations, new front doors, and to repair the eaves slash fascia like for like. So the application was previously reviewed as a conceptual application at the May 4th hearing. And those conceptual review comments included that the proposed amount of demolition of brick wall was too extensive, and that additions should be reversible, ideally using the existing openings of historic of the historic structure to access the addition, that the addition placement roof height and pitch look appropriate. So the applicant has revised the application materials from the conceptual review, uh, which now shows the historic walls being retained, and that reduction of the amount of exterior wall covered by the addition may be recommended to prevent a whole scale removal of the historic wall in the future, as once it becomes an interior wall, um, it will no longer be subject to review by the German Village Commission, so the Commission may want to reduce the amount covered um, if this wall should be maintained in keeping with the standards for alteration. And the staff recommendation is to recommend approval with any clarifications to be submitted to HPO staff prior to issuance of a certificate. And that recommendation is based on the standards on the standards for alteration, specifically numbers 1, 2, and 10. Thank you, Jacqueline. All right, uh, Ms. Bullock, anything else to add? I would just say they've kind of changed their program a little bit um, to, to work with the commissioner's recommendation before we were taking out that wall and making one larger kind of family room space. And they've decided to basically create a little sunroom and leave all the existing openings in place. So programmatically, they've kind of revised it to make that work. Other than that, I think, I mean, I might have added another eight inches just to make so that it was a usable space as a sunroom. But other than that, there really haven't been any changes from the other submission other than you know additional details, et cetera. All right. Questions, comments from the commission. Hey, Julie, it's it's Ned, and, and I really appreciate what you did. I think it's appropriate and I thank your clients also. Oh, thank you. Other than that, I think it looks what's, good. What's the siding material on the ground? Sorry, got it. Okay, yeah. I think it turned out real good. Any questions or comments? Did we have any issues with the garage? I don't remember any. There weren't any comments on it. I had asked and. There were no issues brought up at the previous meetings. And Julie, it complies with all the requirements of the guidelines regarding trims and all that stuff. Yes, yes. I believe so. Okay. Oh, 
I'll be glad to make a motion. We made two minutes here. Back in some of the details. All right, I'm good. Mr. Chair, on item 16 GV 2105 055. 710-714 South Fifth Street, I move to approve as submitted. Second. Are there any questions on the motion? Take the vote. Commissioner Panzer? Aye. Commissioner Durst? Aye. Commissioner Thiel? Aye. Commissioner Ferial? Aye. Commissioner McCoy? Aye. Chair votes aye as well. Ayes have and motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you for it. your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Julie. Thanks. All right, uh, moving on to conceptual applications. Uh, the first one is uh, number 17, GV-21-06-056, 720 City Park. We have an applicant for 720 City Park. I see Mr. Sampson there. Please raise your right hand and unmute yourself. There you go. Do you swear to the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. Uh, it's Nathan Sampson. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, this is a conceptual application and the applicant is proposing new siding and trim. They would like to remove non-original wood siding on dormers at the front facade and replace with new six inch Dutch slash shiplap true exterior boral siding to match the previously approved siding at the rear of the home. Uh, they would be removing non-original rake boards, corner boards, and window trim boards and replace with 5 4 inch true exterior boral trim boards. The new window trim face dimensions and detailing would match existing. The applicant would like to add uh, new windows and they would be replacing existing non-historic 2 over 2 double hung windows within the brick portion of the home on the north elevation, which faces the side yard, the west elevation, which is also the front facade, and the south elevations, which also faces the side yard, with new two over two insulated aluminum clad Marvin Ultimate G2 windows. The applicant would retain existing window sizes and locations, and the Marvin clad window finish would be black to match the previously approved window finish located on the rear of the home. So at the May business meeting, the commission noted the applicant uh, should make sure that the Marvin window trim used is the correct trim. And the commission also noted that they will need to weigh on changing the profile and the height of the siding. All right. Thank you, Jacqueline. Uh, Mr. Sampson, anything else to add? Um, not too much. That, just a couple of things. Um, I think that uh, I, it's just more questions, I think, on my part, too, as uh, the commissioners um, have a chance to respond. But um, one is like the brick mold typically for a cottage like this is more of a square, or a square profile brick mold. And I don't know if there is a Marvin uh, profile that is sort of on the list of there, sort of approved. There is. Okay. Okay. Because I mean, we'd certainly be happy to use that to make sure that we're um, maintaining that appearance. Um, you, you, uh, you can look. Sorry, I'm. Go ahead. My connection is lousy. I don't know whether anybody can hear me at this point. <laughs> Probably not. I, can't. I think you're still good. Okay. Um, in any case, it, you can look at the the uh, trim at 220 Sycamore, and you can look at the trim. I, and these are just happen to be the two that I know on the north east corner of um, back and fifths. Uh, Santine's house had the same the same trim used. Um, it, it is it's a standard product that had not been made in a number of years and they found it and have been using it now. I think they've used it probably four or five places around the village. Okay, terrific. Yeah, I mean, their updated catalog has some, has more square profiles than 
detail profiles, which matches the maybe what the old wood jams would be. But I'll take a look at those. Um, yep. This second thing is just a clarification too. I, I think I noted it incorrectly. The the color of the windows that was approved previously on the rear of the house was ebony. I don't know if that matters, but I just want to be um, straightforward with that. And and um, yeah, in the trim or the sorry the siding on the dormers, um, the the shiplap siding from Boral. The one by six is the narrowest that comes in. Um, and we're just trying to be consistent with the back of the house because that's the only other place that there's siding uh, on this. Um, and then the last thing I think was a question, you know, when this house was remodeled, you know, a number of years back and the windows were put in, the window openings and the what was the former door openings were different sizes. They installed the same width window in all of them. And one question I'll just put to the commission too is, um, is it uh, is it more preferable to match sort of the brick mold width uh, and have slightly different sized or width windows throughout to better fit into the existing masonry opening? Or would you prefer the windows be the same size across the facade? I'm going to talk about the windows and the brick specifically. Um, so that's all I've got to add. I'm happy to answer questions. Well, I mean, it's it's long been the the commission's opinion that the the windows should match the opening. The window size should be based on the individual openings, not on a standard and then varying sizes. I would say that that would be the case. As long as you're within a quarter, I mean, unless you're within a quarter of an inch, if you're within a quarter of an inch variance, mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense to to vary the window size. Um, yeah. Because you, uh, you're going to get that in the irregularity of the brick. Um, there was something else you said. Oh, uh, make sure that they use uh, ebony exterior jam liners. Because um, yeah. that that has been a problem that in in some cases. My only issue. Any other questions or comments? All right. Is there anything else you want from us, Mr. Sampson? No, I think that was helpful. The um, brick mold question and then just the window sizes. I agree. I mean, I think that the windows need to best fit the opening and it just the the way that it had been done previously, they're all the same size. So I just wanted to clarify what the commission's approach on that was. And I, I agree with um, what was stated. So we will update and come back and see you guys. Thank you much. Okay, thank you. She, she, if they wanted to put the doors back in and make them with wind glass windows in them and put the stoops back in, that'd be wonderful. I, I wish we could find them. Yeah, well, right. I know. No, thank you very much. I appreciate the feedback. All right. Moving on to item number 18, uh, GV-21-06-057, 659 South 5th Street. Do you have anybody here from here. 659 South Fish Street? I heard a voice. All right, uh, ship. There we go. Raise your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Please take your name for the record. Steve Hurt with Urban Order Architecture. Very much. Jacqueline? Hey, this application is proposing to enclose a side porch, and they would be retaining the existing roof and basement access and adding walls, windows, and a new door to the underside of the existing porch header. Uh, they would have windows be aluminum clad wood from the approved windows list, with siding to be fiber cement, four inch exposure lap siding. A door would be smooth painted fiberglass with a transom. The applicant is also proposing to add new window openings, including two new windows to the first floor of the south elevation. 
The, those new windows would match the size of the existing first floor windows on that elevation and include stone lintels and sills to match the existing. So at the prior business meeting, the commission asked what when the porch proposed for enclosing was constructed and noted the applicant may run into lot coverage issues, including running over 50% lot coverage. The applicant notes that the porch has a newer concrete block foundation and is not on sandbar maps dating from 1921 to 1961. Um, making them indicating to them that it was younger. The applicant has provided updates on the lot coverage, noting that the current lot is 2008.28 square feet feet and the current total lot coverage with the house and both porches is 1027.4 square feet or 51%. Just the house is 918.4 square feet or 45% and the house and the porch combined is 982.4 or 48.9%. Thank you, Jacqueline. Do you have anything else to add? Um, not really. Um, we're just we're just looking at the existing footprint of that porch and enclosing it. Um, I would add that this is in a <clears throat> interior side yard, so it's it's uh, you know like thirty feet back from the from the sidewalk, um, and it's relatively new. <laughs> And uh, the windows, I think, may have existed in similar houses, especially on a corner. Um, so that's the the plan and why we want to add some windows. All right. Comments from the commission. Sorry, I hate to say that. Where are the windows that you're? About adding on the south elevation, so the the two windows on the first floor to the right on the, the south one. elevation. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. We've. I can. I can state with absolute categorical. <laughs> confidence that we've never approved anything like that in 15 years at least. I'm not saying whether it's a good or a bad idea. I'm just saying we've never approved anything like that remotely like that. Hey, Jay, I'll go so far to say it's inappropriate. Oh, I think it's inappropriate also. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> hey, I don't know whether no. No, you're right. We never have. I'd say it was a good idea or a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say we've, we've never approved. We've, uh, we've never approved anything. Yeah, adding windows to historic fabric. No. Yeah, yeah. I just we've we've rarely. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. On this particular location, because this house is on a corner, and this could be a typical pattern of windows it is one of the reasons that we're asking, but I do know it's a, it's a, it's an ask. I, I can't think of any logic. Call for a house the way it was built hundred years ago, just because it's on a corner and it should have liked the owners when they built it should have added the windows, but they did. Well, <laughs> the, the one point Ned that I, that I, First of all, I, I agree with the your end game here. I can't imagine how it's appropriate. It's really not the front of the house. It's really the side of the house. Right. I, that being said, I don't think it makes any difference. It's on, no. a, you know, it's probably it's, on a more principal facade than yeah. the front of the house really because of the fact that it's on yeah, the second floor. Exactly. Yeah. This, yeah. this no, side I, is more yeah. public exposure than the fifth street. Yeah. The porch enclosure, I I can buy. I you got to take a the the lot coverage. Just looking at the sandworm maps, something looks really screwy because if you look at the sandworm maps, it looks like it's closer to sixty than fifty percent. So I based some, all someone of, should look. I did. I based all of the. Uh, Square foot calculations on the survey, and we do have a rather large side yard. Um, 
Oh, I get it. I, I'm just looking at the sandboard, which says that it's there's a really nice side yard, but that side yard is not close to the same as the uh, as the house itself. Now, all, you know, sandborns are way far from perfect in terms of their scale, but they're it, it's interesting enough and far enough away from visually accurate for me to really want to know what's going on there. Yes, which is why I use the survey um, to figure that out. Well, included, you know, included in the plans, you know, that you submit. So, yeah, I, we will. Yeah. I, I, I mean, you're not making the impermeable area. You know, it, it it kind of what it is. I don't, I don't see that I'm going to have a problem with it. The porch. Okay. I'm good with it. Any other feedback you're looking for? Um, no, I think that's good. All right, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to the next conceptual uh, number 19 GV 21 06 058 932 Mohawk. Yes, see Mr. Culp there. Can you please raise yep. your right hand. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, but the truth. Yes, I do. And please state your name for the record. Andrew Colt. Thank you very much. Jacqueline. This application is proposing to enlarge a garage um, currently at the dimensions listed in the application description. The existing foundation is noted to not be sufficient to support an addition to the existing structure and the existing structure would therefore be demolished and site prep for new construction. A new garage would be built in conjunction with a porch addition to the existing house and a breezeway to connect the addition and garage. The existing fence would be altered to terminate into the corner of the proposed garage. The existing brick paper patio would be reinstalled per the submitted plan. And the new garage uh, will require a zoning variance as the existing structure does not have sufficient space to the far side of the alley. It is currently 17 feet from the east elevation of the garage to the far side of the alley, and zoning requires 36 inches for side property lines and 20 feet from the face of the garage to the far side of the alley. So the applicant will be requesting a variance to keep the east, west, and south walls of the new garage in the same location as the existing garage. The north wall will extend approximately 60 inches to the north. So at the May business meeting, the commission noted that breezeways are typically not recommended and asked if the dimensions on the cover letter were flipped, and the applicant has submitted a revised version of the cover letter addressing the dimensions. All right, Mr. Culp, anything else to add? Uh, yes, I wanted to clarify the breezeway uh, description. If you look at the drawings, which I understand are very rough at this point, um, it's it's labeled breezeway, which is probably an accurate assessment. Uh, it's really more of a pergola structure that would connect the, the proposed porch and the proposed garage addition. So I just wanted to clarify that it would not be an enclosed structure or would not even have a roof on it. It would be more of a, a garden type pergola structure um, that was inaccurately labeled. All right, thank you. Questions, comments from the commission? All right, hearing silence. <laughs> um, uh, we're looking at it. So I'll say typically. I got a when, question. The 18 foot four the length of the garage, is that the exterior dimension or the interior dimension? Exterior dimension from uh, existing garage front to back, outside dimension is 18 foot four. And is that large enough with the thickness of the wall to actually park a car? There. 
They're, they have small vehicles, and considering the existing radius, uh, turning radius, and the, the 17 feet we have to the far side of the alley, um, they would prefer not to bring it closer to the house, which is one of the reasons we're going for the zoning variance. Uh, if you look at the uh, very first page of the drawings, the sketches, it shows the, the back of the west wall of the existing garage is 76 inches away from the rear wall of the house or the east wall of the house. So to uh, to meet zoning requirements without going for a variance, we would actually have to shove the garage towards Mohawk Street or to the west by an additional three feet, which would then basically close that distance from uh, the rear of the house to the garage to uh, 40 inches. So, you know, they're, what they're really trying to do is maintain the depth of the existing garage and just make it a little wider, which will help accommodate the turning radius. But you, you are correct, 18 foot, four inches is a shallow garage. Do, do we know how old the garage is? I do not have that information as far as- I mean, it, it's, it looks like it was there in 51. Yeah, I do not have that information. We did, she had mentioned, um, you know, as far as insufficient foundation, we have done some exploratory excavation around the perimeter of the garage and it does not extend more than about 12 inches deep. Yeah, no, the problem is the prospect of demolishing a historic garage. Gotcha. I know one of the things that typically comes up, um, if if demolition were to be uh, approved, basically any, I'll say, grandfathered in locations, dimensions, whatever's kind of out the window at that point. So going for the variance, I'll say that the case of this is where the garage was doesn't come into play. And when it comes to that point, just want to kind of put that out there whenever you guys come back with this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's right. If, if if demolition is appropriate, the footprint of the this, the existing garage doesn't matter so much, right, Anthony? Correct. And the other question I would have is looking at um, sheet seven, um, which is that one right there, uh, the dimension from the garage, should be the south end of the garage left on the sheet, to adjacent property shows 33 inches. Is That's that correct. where's the property line fall in relation to that? We are, still, we are still waiting on a survey to get that exact dimension, but from what I can gather, it's roughly in the middle of that. So somewhere in the 17 inch range, 16, 17. Yeah. I, that's not exact at the, at the moment. We have not, um, we're still waiting on surveyors. But it's it's somewhere in there based on what I can gather. One of the problems you'll have with that that south wall will be distance off the property line, um, and I'm assuming there's going to the overhangs of the roof will come into play. I know we have problems if you're not three feet off the property line, um, you can't really have that roof overhang. So that's going to come into play with your architectural design of the garage. So I think that's going to open up another can of worms if removing that garage if you're removing the garage. You may not be able to use that location period. The we, whole thing may we, right, and we have uh, we've requested the variance to the the side yard variance down to one foot. But that application is, is still pending. And my hope was that we would get an endorsement from this commission to be able to take to uh, BZA with that variance is that it does not allow if, if you're down to one foot it does not allow for any overhanging whatsoever which presents an architectural challenge if designing a garage that's going to be acceptable yeah i think we're pretty open as far as the location ultimately the goal is not if we can help it is not to push towards the house to the west if we can help it um you know, again, that's going to require the variance, and that's our ultimate goal. Um, if we have to shift 
to the north a little bit, that would be, you know, that would be okay. Um, you know, certainly the main goal is to get the new garage structure um, and, and maintain as much yard space to the north as we can. Um, so, you know, if, if we were, if we were granted say a one foot variance, we could push the foundation of the structure north slightly to maintain an overhang there. I, I agree the overhang needs to be there as far as in the design. I think that's going to look the best, um, provide the most appeal. I think to get, I think to get demolition, we've got to uh, a identify if it's historic and it shows up on the 51 Sanborn. We identified that. Um, B is the structure what was built in 51. So kind of got to prove prove the case that if it's not, is there other would the studs indicate that it's newer, et cetera, et cetera. So try we got to get past demolition before. Anything else can happen with the garage. Just, just demolishing it for convenience um, doesn't really pass the test for the commission. Have you had a structural engineer look at it to see how you can actually build an addition off the existing building? We have not gone down that road. Um, this was our, our, you know, what we were perceiving as our path of least resistance. Um, you know, I, I'm not a structural engineer. However, you know, I've been in construction my entire life and have somewhat of an engineering background and you know there well there may be creative solutions to do it they're likely not cost effective considering the condition of the existing garage uh, and what would need to be done to you know shore the foundation improve the condition of the existing garage to be able to add on to the new i mean if that's our only option then such is life um but we were exploring you know an alternative option before we went down that road. So I think from again, if we can get if we end up getting past demolition, I think the the siding on the garage not a problem there. I think the overall design, I don't, I don't see any big problems with that. Um, the the breezeway pergola, call it call it what you will. Um, I know in the past we've had issues where folks have asked for pergola, and they ended up just putting a solid cap on top of it, which wasn't approved. So I just just. Caution the clients down the road that just getting a pergola approved is not going to be a an avenue for putting a, a hard cap on it to keep rain off your head. Sure, sure. Yeah, obviously we've got we've got some legwork to do as far as design. Our intentions were to you know kind of get the concept down, make sure locations, uh, you know, obviously get past the hurdle of demolition. Those things, um, you know, see where we stand with that before we invest in the details and construction drawings, um, material selection, so on and so forth. So, so what, what, um, what do we need to pursue to get past or get to the point of a decision on demolition? Um, you know, what avenues do I need to look to look into for that? So, so I'm looking at the 1922 Sanborn map, and it was not there then. So it's 70 years old, but not 100 years old. It could be 90. There's a little bit of a gap. Yep. Right.
So you probably have to do some exploratory demolition just to see if you could take pictures, find evidence that whatever historic material from the 30s or 40s has already been replaced to prove that your garage is no longer has historic material. Okay, okay. so we're, our, our, what we're trying to do is just determine that things have been updated to the point where it doesn't make sense to keep it. Is that the lamest term? It's no longer a historic building anymore. Gotcha. So if, if the siding's not original, if the roof's not original, if the studs aren't original, the rafters aren't original, you can prove it has basically been the, the vast majority of the material of the structure is, is no longer original. That's that's your path forward for that. Okay. Okay. And that's just a matter of documentation and providing that to this commission as far yep. as pictures and, and whatever exploratory information we come across. Yep, photos of anything. Well, good documentation is always fantastic, more the better. Um, and if, if you come to the point where you think you've made that case, we could have one or two commissioners come out there, take a look at it as well. Happy to, to walk by and take a peek, um, and kind of get, get our eyes on it, because obviously eyes on are better than photos. So we can do that as well. Work that through Jacqueline. Okay. Is there, is there a, um, a threshold that I should be looking for as far as age? Um, I know you said it's it was on the uh, forgive me for the year 40, 41, 51, 51, uh, 51. 51 maps, uh, but not on the the earlier ones, the 20, 21 maps. Um, 22. So, in, 22. so we know so we know it's so we know it's at least 70 years old. We don't we know it, it, it might be 98 years old. Right. Somewhere so, between then. I guess my question is, at what point does it make a difference? Um, so in other words, like if, if we, um, for an example, we, we proved that the roof was replaced in 52, does that make a difference or what is it just, are we just, it's considered a historical structure at this point. I have to prove that it is beyond the point of where it has no historical significance. Is that kind of the, the threshold that we're going Generally, through? Generally speaking, uh, according to the architect of the interior for the United States, uh, the, their standards are if it's 50 years old or older, they consider the structure historic um, and being part of a historic district that tends to apply. If we're in the 1950-1970 range, we can be a little flexible depending on the style and the materials and whatnot. But if it was there by, by, by 1951, it's it's gained historic historic significance due to its its age. Gotcha. Yeah, the 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 age of the roof doesn't matter. There aren't unless it's slate. There aren't any roofs that are more than fifty years old. Sure. And if they're fifty years old, they're they need to be replaced right away. <laughs> right. Is there an architecture kind of a, a th uh, as far as uh, the architecture of the garage does that come into play at all not really okay so whatever they build doesn't matter what they build it could have been yeah even if they even if they built some screwball crazy thing screwball crazy things might be part of the historic uh structure of the uh, uh of the village okay I'm just trying and to understand. We, and we can show you examples of screwball things. <laughs> I'm sure you can. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm I'm just trying to understand and make sure I get my questions answered while sure. while I'm here. So, um, I think that that covers. Uh, we'll do some exploratory research, potentially look into uh, look into our options from a uh, an engineering standpoint, and um, go from there. It looks like it's in pretty good shape, though, right? Uh, I suppose it depends on your your definition. I guess well, by, I understand. by fifty year old garages with no foundation standard or seventy year old garages with no foundation standards, it's not too bad. Um, the house know. the house I grew up in in the campus area had a garage with, believe it or not, a wood floor. <laughs> 
I, I will ask one one thing for you. Um, the door that's on there currently, what's the width of the current door? Uh, the current overhead door? Yes. Uh, I believe, and this is just going off of rough scale, I believe it's a nine-foot door. Nine-foot door? Okay. Nine-foot wide. I know a lot I of folks who come come at eight foot and they want to put a nine-foot in. So I know gotcha. we've done that in the past of widening the door in the in the principal, the original structure. Okay. So, all right, we'll take a look at um, at our options and um, hopefully uh, see you again next meeting. That's good. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Have a good night. All right, move on to item number 20, which is GV-21-06-059, 607 Lathrop. See Mr. Hugus and Mr. Ghosh, but both raise your right hands. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. And please state your uh, name for the record. We do, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I do. I also have uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, have uh, Miss uh, representing uh, um, condominium co complex to the north of me. Since uh, the commissioners may have questions about the easement or the driveway apron, um, uh, so if you want to swear him in, um, he's here. Sure. All right. You swear to tell the truth, hold you to the truth. Please state your name for the record. Will you? We do. Right here, Mr. Ghosh, your your connection's pretty bad. It's chopping up pretty bad. With um, I'm a Ghost property owner. Right, Mr. Ghost, your connection is pretty bad. It's chopping up and cutting out on us. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, uh, go ahead, Mr. Pat. Uh, this is Patrick Phillips, adjacent property owner and representing Carey's House Court, a condominium development. Uh, Thank is you that very much. You bet. <laughs> All right, Jacqueline, you want to go ahead? Hey, this is a conceptual application, and the applicant is proposing a well, proposing new parking for the front lot as well as a lot split. Uh, the assumption would be that the new rear lot would provide parking for two vehicles, and there is no anticipated variances for lot coverage. However, there may be rear yard variances. So at the May business meeting, the commission asked about the purpose of the proposed lot split, and the applicant notes that the new drive for two cars is being requested because the current parking spaces will become part of the new lot if approved. Okay. Uh, applicant, have anything else to add? Uh, this is Bill Hugas. Yes. Um, uh, in in proposing a lot split, the lots would be twenty six fifty square feet each, um, and in doing that, of course, it triggers a variance in itself. itself. So there will be some additional variances for each new lot, uh, but each new lot we would not propose coverage exceeding 50% on the building and porches. Um, on the front lot, if you look at L1, we would that would trigger a rear yard of 23% if we held the maximum uh, addition at 449, a future addition. We're planning uh, for a future addition um, for Amit and his wife. It's a it's one a bedroom, bit. which makes it very difficult to, to live in. Um, in doing the lot split, the new lot uh, off of Briggs would have accommodate two car parking as shown on my sketch C1. Uh, and I don't anticipate any other variances other than lot and a north side yard because the lot is so narrow to get to two get cars two. in and knowing the commission wants at least uh, an eight foot door not a 16 foot door um, we would need to tighten the north property line 
to building down to two feet. Um, we don't have any design for the house. This is merely a conceptual uh, idea. The critical cog is going to be providing parking up front for 607. And Lathrop is extremely narrow street. It's actually so narrow you can't, two cars can't pass. One has to jump the curb to do it. And um, Amit and Pat have discussed combining Pat's approach and widening it so that Amit can use two new parking spaces, um, tandem spaces, up beside the house, and that's what that drawing shows. We wanted to get a an idea of commission view on, on that idea, because if we can't provide parking, I think this is a dead, dead deal. All right, thank you. Is that short, come... short and sweet enough? <laughs> short and sweet. Comments from the commission? I mean, how do you deal with the parking on Lathrop? You do you get a permanent easement? There would be some kind of cross easement. Um, and this condition is very similar to one I did beside the Pankhausers on Beck Street, where half the driveway for the neighboring house is on Pankhausers lot, but they gave a permanent easement to it. Um, and wow. the, um, the one thing I do know is the approach for this condominium uh, complex existing, there's 12 units in this condo complex, the approach from the street department would need to be 20 feet minimum. And I, I'm showing a little wider than that right now on my little sketch. Uh, the condominium approach was approved originally as a one way in only. And there is an, a second exit out of this condominium parking lot to Briggs Street, which is technically an alley. Does that make sense to everybody? So it's technically an alley the same as an alley? Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's char and chip even. <laughs> uh, real, real quick. I only say that because sometimes some of these brick curb streets are actually technically alleys. <laughs> the reverse. Yep. Uh, real quick, Jacqueline, since this is going to be involving the, the condominium complex up there, I need to recuse myself. Okay. That puts me too close. Sure. Oh. So the, the condominiums to the north puts you too close? Oh, sorry. He's gone already. Correct. That's correct. Yeah, I didn't even think of that, Anthony. Sorry. So we're here to get a reaction for the primarily for the parking up front for 6, 607. If we can't get some kind of agreement on a way to proceed there, then it's probably not going to happen. The lot split. We are I mean, the only thing. Go ahead. Well, I, I mean, I don't see that you've got 10 feet from the house to the fence or, or to the existing curb that's there, right? Oh, you're talking about the back lot. No, I'm looking at Lathrop. Oh. Yes. Yes, the house sits back 10 feet. Seven and a half feet and three feet. feet. That is correct. Yes. Seven and a half feet and three feet. A little bit of an offset, so. Yes. You So you would need an easement over that entire, well, over the three feet all the way from where that curb is, all the way to Lathrop. Yeah, that's correct. Yes. Uh, uh. 
And that would have to be approved by the majority of the owners of the condominium, obviously, according to Pat. And that would have to be done before the lot split's done. Well, or simultaneously, I, I think BZAs, or no, this would be city council. Uh, city, city council probably would require the written easement to be filed too, as part of their process. Yeah, it would have to be filed before city council considers the, the uh, considers the or conditional upon the variance. I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't. I would have to let the attorneys do one, that. One way or another, they have to. I think the word you used before is simultaneous. There, there's. They're probably not simultaneous. Which one's a moment yeah. or before the other is a different question. But exactly. Yeah, they're probably. They're probably not concurrent conditions. One's probably a condition of the other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, the other issue. Well, our recommendation is obviously going to be based on, um, based on that easement being in place. Right. Right. And we would do a more filed or not. We would do a more. And that's the other way you can do it. By the way, is is you can you can actually sign and execute the easements just not file them until right it becomes appropriate to file. right right well that i would think a, i would think a specifically enforceable written agreement for the easement oh yeah would be enough yeah uh, this is pat phillips the neighbor uh the easement is currently being uh written up by a lawyer and uh you know we're going down that road So I, I attempted to keep the new approach on Lathrop as narrow as possible, but I, I only because I know the commission is sensitive about how wide some of these approaches get. The current drive is 13 and a half feet wide. We would we probably expand that to well have to be a minimum of 20 feet. Uh, for the street department to approve any change. So a, a question that, that come that I guess comes up you're you're looking at changing the, the, the way this thing works. Why not just use that the condominium entrance as an entrance to the um to parking for the brig side? Um Commissioner uh Panzer, uh, this is Ahmed. Um yeah. I went to the uh, uh, um, public services department and they said, we will not allow you to add more cars to an existing driveway that already doesn't meet uh, uh, um, our requirements. Uh, and they gave me the code since it's 3212.13 of the city code. They said, we will not allow you to add more cars unless you bring apron to and to their for standards. That, that, uh, yes it, it and, and they explained to me that uh, um, current uh, fire hydrant is at the corner of uh, Jackson and Lathrop if the fire department has to fight the fire they would um, since they can't drive down Briggs they will have to use Lathrop as their entrance and they said uh, the Columbus fire will object to uh, uh, driveway aprons not meeting today's standards. So you need to uh, um, um, bring it to today's standard. Now, it so happens that uh, the driveway apron at the right of way line is wider because of the flare. So we may only need an extension of uh, about five feet, not uh, seven or eight feet. Well, but Amit, you have to remember there's, we have to taper it down per handicap standards on each side of this apron, which it doesn't occur right now, but they will require that for us. So yeah. it, 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 it's actually a, a little point. wider than what we would expect. So it's, this is being driven by Columbus Fire and Public Services. 
you know? Yeah. Was there a thought? Was there a, a thought about using um, using your solution, Bill? Um, God, I was about to say next door, and then I looked outside and I went, no, not next door anymore. Um, <laughs> about using the uh, um, the solution of uh, the dual tandem garages. I mean, you're talking about tandem parking here anyway. It's well, the, the problem is the width of this lot, it's extremely narrow. It's only 26 and a half feet wide. And to the south along Briggs, there's a garage, as you can see, it's three feet off. To the north is a four unit. Well on the path. It, yeah. it would, that tandem garage would have to be 38 feet long, two feet, two feet. minimum off the north property line. I, I don't know. I mean, that's certainly an option. I, I'm i not you've sure probably how got room, You've probably got room for the garage, but you don't have room for a way to get up or a way to get around. No, you, 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 either way, we're going to have to have a front door kind of situation on the south side of this new lot house of some sort. Yeah. I mean, it's tight. That's the only reason I didn't seriously look at something more innovative. Well, oh, I, I mean, to me, I, I, well, and are, but aren't you going to be over, or are you going to be right at 50%? I'm holding probably right the out back here. lot at fifty percent of max. I don't yeah. in creating smaller lots than the code currently allows. I don't think it's right to try to go over fifty percent when you're already under on the lot. And we don't know. I mean, and you you base the future addition of the Lathrop lot on fifty percent of that. I assume as well. That's correct. Yeah, and that's why the rear yard would be 23% approximately, 23. assuming the addition is 449 square feet. It's, it's a numbers game. Well, I think the, the real, the, the tricky part here is getting the, is getting the situation with the parking on the Lathrop parcel. Exactly. exactly. Because I, I I would be surprised to see any well I don't think you'd want any um, relief from having usable parking on that parcel. Yeah. And and the new parking along Lathrop House would probably butt up against the house, which I know that's not a commission. Um, Good point. But I don't think it has. I don't think it has. I mean, if you're if you're at ten and a half feet off the house, I mean, you're up against the house pretty tight. Well, parking but... space needs to be ten feet wide, so we probably have to variance to nine feet wide for the parking pad. Since we're doing variances, uh, Christine Lead uh, is. Why would you? Why would you need a variance to nine feet? Because of a parking, oh no, you're right. It's 20. the drive that has to be ten feet, and the parking pad mm. has to be nine feet wide, nine by eight. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, we could I mean, probably it's... get a, an eighteen inch space between the house and the parking. Right. The north. The, the point is, the north side of the easement area needs to be the ten and a half feet off, roughly ten feet off of the house. Yeah. Yep. Yes, uh, okay. uh, uh, Commissioner Panzer, this is Amit. Uh, uh, we requested a uh, three feet by 50 feet easement from the uh, Condominium Association, and so far the uh, uh, answer has been positive. Amit, we would have to uh, also. You're, you're breaking up, but yeah, I agree. I think that's, I think that's exactly what you need. You need, you need. 36 
Yeah, rough. Yeah, you need from basically from the curb line back. Well, from the curb line back to the curb line, if right. you know, three feet by fifty feet. Yeah. Yes. All right. And I just didn't know how the commission would react and to that. I am commissioners. Anything else? I, I'm sorry, but I mean everybody's breaking up here terribly. Oh, or I am. It's all that heat. Now we're losing Bill. What? <laughs> no, we're not. We're dropping like flies. <laughs> I think it's all that heat in Arizona. <laughs> okay. Can, is there anything else on this? Not yeah, that I can actually hear if there were. Yeah, I'm going to comment. We have a single family resident, uh, full lot that has no parking problems right now. And for some reason, somebody's asked for a split. Split is going to cause a lot of problems. It's going to increase density. And I don't know what this thing in the back is going to look like. Honestly, Ned, I don't know whether, whether it's you or me, but I, I, yeah. yeah it's, it's you, Jay. It's you, Jay. So right. I, I don't, I don't see, I don't see the parking issues being developed as good solutions to allow for a uh, lot split. I don't, and I don't see what's going on in the back. A house tucked behind a garage is a new build. As, as a good solution either. So I we got a perfectly good piece of property here that's to split it's gonna cause a lot of problems and increased density over there. Karen, any comments and, and about not holy <laughs> I'm trying to trying to understand it all. But um, I, I don't have an issue. I think that that parking could be reasonably screened, um, you know, just in the way you have it drawn. So I don't have an issue with that. If you can get the curb cut expanded and, and yeah. make it to work. I did try to get a little planting area between the drive and the walk from the public walk to the front porch. To try yeah. to separate. Here it's um, going to be a big wide driveway with parking down one side. I don't know how you're going to screen it. Well, I think I think it depends on what the ma the materials are. I mean, we have we have parking beside houses in several places in the village, and generally we ask you know that that be brick. Yeah. My only point is this house has got parking in the back already. Okay. Um, and how are you going to handle the grade change, Bill? Uh, we haven't gotten that far, Ned. Yeah. This is a very conceptual uh, at this point. I, I do. I am aware of the grade change. Yeah. Uh, there is a retaining mm -hmm. wall that, it, but it stops at a certain point. Yeah, but you're still off. So, uh, yeah, uh, there would have to be. Some great changes, I think, for the existing asphalt drive as well, Ned. Like, like pretend yeah. There's a lot of pieces of this puzzle. Yeah. Like I said, I, I think you got a perfectly good property that we're making worse. Ah, okay. Um, Commissioner, if I may say, uh, the um, property at this point, uh, and with the driveway at this point, the apron being torn out, um, I'd like to submit that if we do the driveways together, like Mr. Phillips and uh, uh, us have been talking about, it will actually uh, uh, um, make the appearance of this whole area a whole lot better than it looks now. You can see the current photos. And we will also screen the and we've looked at the grades and how much the grades need to come up and what the grade for the grades for the uh, uh, condominium needs to meet that. And we're willing to uh, uh, work out all the grades and uh, um, make that work out. Yes, the, uh, the grades on my side of the driveway will probably need to come up about six inches. Uh, addressing this is the adjacent property owner, Pat Phillip, in regard to the lot split. You know, this property is uh, 
F and to, to subject them to be able to zoning code where all around them they have had that freedom to go ahead and do so would be pretty restrictive uh, for the property owner. You know, he's been here for a long time, tacked as an R2F lot. Uh, he is asking to be able to use the present zoning and uh, uh, not letting that happen might be a little bit, of, uh, might be a little bit unjust. Just I, 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 Pat, I, I get your point, but you're making the argument that every person in German village by right has the right to build two houses on their property. And that just doesn't, I, I mean, I, I guess what I would argue is that it, if anything else being perfect were the case, no variances, no nothing, then may, and, and no sm lots smaller than 3,000 square feet and no new curb cuts and it, and, 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 then I might see your point, but just because there are apartment buildings and it's owned R2F does not categorically, you know, allow you to go around all of the other things that are prescriptive in terms of how you develop property within the historic district. I, that part, I just don't buy. Okay, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting comment. It's an interesting way to look at it. I just don't buy it. Yeah. Well, you know, he does he does have frontage on two streets, being Briggs and Lathrop. So I just you know street in an alley. I know. Uh, but look <laughs> at how look at the village is full of houses on alleys. Um and the other comment I was I'm going to make is that uh, where I park on Briggs, uh, I basically park on grass. And I don't know that the zoning code is quite kind to that. But that's that's how we are. That's a whole separate issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we're trying to alleviate that too. And uh, um, and it's not uncommon that somebody doesn't use the driveway uh, that's already there uh, for the uh, uh, property to the south and doesn't park next to our house either. So that's a reality we also face. Um, so we thought, let's uh, legitimize all of these. And that's how I've uh, engaged. Uh, in listen, I, I think that I think we need to a little bit further forward. I think that we need to think about it a little bit as you okay. do, and mm -hmm. then take a look at it when it when and if it can become a little more real. We'd have a we'll have a little better handle on it down the road here. It just. A lot of pieces to this puzzle. So, yeah. The critical is the parking up for the 607. So, all right. You have anything else, Pat, or admit? It's certainly, I think they're all critical. Yeah. No, I think they're, I think they're all critical. I think that that's just the first, you know, the first trigger beyond which you, you're not going to get past that unless you can, you're not going to get past any of Correct. this unless you can figure that out. And you might like fast it anyway because some of the the comments that that Ned made are are perfectly yeah, valid. Yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. Okay. All right. That's it. Any anyone okay. else? No. I, I, Bill, I would just say a garden in that northeast corner would be nicer than a parking lot. Oh, okay. Say it again. I didn't. I didn't get it. Oh. <laughs> that's okay. Moving on. All right. <laughs> the northeast corner. <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Hartke, get back here, Mr. Chairman. I don't want to, Dad. <laughs> I, I have to recuse myself on the last one because uh, uh, I have a contract with the company, and Joe Wickham became my contact recently after two other people left the company. Oh. Okay. So just, happens to choose the last one. <laughs> All right. That was good. Thank you, Commissioner Durst. Yeah. All right. Let's get it. Thank you. All right, we're on to item 21. Anyway, dash two, GV dash two one dash zero six dash zero six zero, ten fifty Yeager Street. I believe we have a couple applicants here, Mr. Hudson and the Wickham's. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth? I do. 
Please state your name for names for the, for the record. Anthony Hudson. Stephanie Wickham. Joe Wickham. Thank you very much. All right, Jacqueline. Okay, so this application is also conceptual and the last application, uh, the proposed work is to construct a two story carriage house. I made that end name. Uh, the. Oops, I think this is an older thing, but the proposed work is to construct a two story addition and to remove that existing first story addition. Um, so at the May business meeting, the commission did ask about the lot coverage and how close the addition will be to the neighbor's house, noting um, penetrating the new addition wall into the three foot lot line space will likely create some overhang issues and the commission does recommend keeping a three foot space to avoid that. The applicant has submitted a site plan with lot coverage in information um, after that business meeting feedback. All righty, uh, does the applicant have anything else to add? Yeah, I'd like to just start. Obviously, we've come to the commission a couple of times now. Um, never, first time as a conceptual as well as the second time talking about our demolition, but we've gone back and take everything into account that we've heard to date, really focusing on what's appropriate from the council's perspective as well as what's appropriate down here within the neighborhood. So um, we're interested in to hearing anything and um, everything from the council today. So that will be ready to, from the commission today, so that we'll be ready to come back um, in a month's time. For approval, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, comments from the commission. They're digesting. Okay. Jacqueline, you had mentioned um, well, you had mentioned overhangs. Well, first of all, thank you because I, I think that that uh, you've you've clearly heard what the commission had to say, um, regardless of what our comments are today. But the, the, there, you you've clearly embraced what I think is both the um, this the spirit of the guidelines. Well, well the, the details of the technical Last requirements one. of the guidelines as well as the spirit of the guidelines but it's a big one is a um is an application that that is much much closer to being in conformance with you know what the commission requires than uh than than where we started and and know that we whatever the comments are here we we certainly appreciate and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to plan to plan something bad in your heads. <laughs> I, just, I have no idea what other people are going to say, but uh, I'm just saying we really do appreciate when people uh, take to heart what what we have to say and um, and and study it and uh, and and try to figure out how to make it work for them while understanding that we're not doing anything. You know, we're not saying any of this to punish anyone or to to say we don't like the, the last thing we ever say is we don't like what you did. Um, it, we, it's either appropriate or it's inappropriate, whether whether it's good or bad or we like it or we don't like it isn't the issue. It's whether it is, in our view, appropriate for the historic district and. Um, I really appreciate, uh, as I say, I really appreciate where where this has gone. Other than the upside down photographs in the application, which I'm looking. At. But beyond that, and then I'll come back. I have one. One comment just off the bat, looking at the, you got a proposed terrace in the back. It looks like it's raised up off the ground. Um, how, what's on the neighboring site at that point? Anything? So 
the proposed terrace, like obviously our north side extends further than the south side. So the south side, the house basically adjacent to our next door to us um, ends at that point that our house ends. And they have a, I would call it a deck before their pool, um, but it's, it's ways, but it's only probably about six inches off the ground, as my estimation from what I can see. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to picture, so where this thing kind of butts up, is there a fence there? Is there a structure there? What yeah, is that? So there's a, we have a, a, a wood privacy fence between the two properties. Okay. All right. Um, one of the things we've spoken about before has to do with the roof overhangs and the adjacent and the property line. I'm assuming that all of that has been dealt with. Because it looks like you're going to require some fire rating of the soffit. On that side where you're where you're at 3 feet or you're at less, 3 feet or less than 3 feet. North side. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and we can adjust that. We can adjust that soffit. You know, right now I looked at the property to the uh, to the north, um, and they roughly had a a twelve inch soffit. That's what I had drawn here. Um, we can adjust that down. Um, well, the, the problem the problem is we need to be you need to be really careful because probably the answer from our perspective is no, you can't adjust that down. Um, we, we had several circumstances, um, where we, we actually approved architecture that was, you know, a foot off the property line. It went through building code review and the fire department said, you can't have a soffit. So they just cut the soffit off and it was built without the soffit and our heads exploded when we, when we saw it in the real world. Um, it, I. You, you need to solve that and, and it's probably a matter of fireproofing, you know, of, of uh, fire rating that's off in the construction around. I, I think if not, you've got a different problem. Definitely due diligence of, of talking to building zoning folks and, and anybody's going to be doing inspections. Getting writing that they're okay with what you have. So when it comes down to the end of the day and they do the final inspections, we don't have somebody coming back and saying, nope, can't put that soffit there. Because we've had, I say, back and forth wavering feedback from the city regarding those. They, one, at one point it was, oh, you can have the soffit, no problem, as long as you're not over the property line. The next one was, if you're three foot off with your wall, the soffit can extend in, no problem. And then it was, if you're into that three foot at all, no soffit period. So there's not a clear guidance that we've got. So just make sure whatever you, you, you do, get it communicated, get it written down. And and if you do something that hasn't got a certificate of appropriateness from the commission, you got to come back. Gotcha. So if, if we were to, uh, and hear me out here, Joe, if we were to adjust that uh, north wall, I think right now we're about 2.76 to, uh, I think we got to move it about four inches to the south. We would be out of that three foot setback, which is uh, what the setback requirements are. Because the existing house on the north side right now is, is I think 2.1 foot into the, uh, with the setback, and then it has roughly a 18 inch overhang. I know it's existing, but that's what's what's there at this point. If you, if you if you go from 2.6 to three foot, that's 2.88 inches, so three inches. And then no, you, I, I hope two, somebody else could hear them because my network connection is really bad here. We're, yeah. we're at 2.76. Yep. And so if you come back 0.24 inches, that's 2.88. If you go back 0.24 feet, that's 2.88 inches, three inches. Right. You push that wall back at the, to the three foot mark. You're good.
Because the other the other concern would be with being in that 2.76 feet, all that glazing on the north wall of the addition becomes an issue with fire rating of that entire wall. So I think I think to keep the the fenestration everything that you have currently, you're probably better off just pulling at that three inches and calling it a day. Uh, any thoughts from the commission on the, the siding orientation? Horizontal below and, and board and batten above. Is there a historic example of it anywhere in the village? Um, I, I think there is my, my thought is that it only exists where second story have been added, but I'm not right. sure about that. Right. That's, that's what I would have guessed. Well, we're, we're, I mean, we're I, to break. mind you, I don't have, a, yeah, I don't have a problem with it because, it, because it, it breaks up that, I, I, I mean, I, I certainly board and bat running all the way up would be not good. It's just two those vertical lines are never going to be straight. You're never going to perceive it that way. It'd have to have breaks in it and just clabbered running all the way up is. God, I can't believe the word banal just came to my head, but it, uh, <laughs> I know it's used a lot. <laughs> that's not, that's the, that's what popped into my head. Well, we were trying to break up the massing so it didn't just look thin all. Um, and I think this accomplishes that. Now, I don't know about the uh, the LP smart board because that, again, is something that I think we'll find that we've not approved. I, I've ch I don't know where you see that note or if that might have been in my old. We've we've changed that to a uh, to the Boral. Well. Yeah, I don't know whether the Boral, uh, whether Boral has been, sorry, I can tell you, it's on page three. It's on the elevation of page three, quarter inch LP smart board. That, that um, was a. And LP, we, LP trimmer, am I looking at an old sheet? No. Maybe in all detail, but that's, that's what's definitely I know. showing up. Oh, yeah, that's. Uh, is this an. I know in the past, so Boral doesn't make a sheet. Um, I know in the past we looked at doing like a hardy panel with Boral battens. Um, that was, I think, done in the past. I'm not saying that smart side wouldn't be an okay board. I've just never seen it in practice. Uh, but I'll make the same comment I did on an application earlier. I know a lot of the LP smart side stuff and the smart board it has that faux wood grain. And that's what we don't want. If it's a smooth finish, that's what we're looking for, but don't have that that faux grain on it. I and I understand that. And a lot of those products have are two sided, one to one for smooth and one for that faux grain. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on the commission about the fenestration window openings? I think on the rear, that's very rear, so no one's gonna see that. I'm I'm more questioning the the two on the the west elevation on page yeah, on sheet three. No. I I don't know if it's the lower window being so small or if it's above the head of the windows on the primary original facade out front just something just feels yeah you're right anthony i don't have a problem with anything on the on the on the uh would that be south south or, or the back anthony, well when you look at it on the south it, it, i mean it's it's not really an issue but it th that window at the west end of the south elevation is paired with the window 
on the east elevation, and that's what's causing the problem with the historic um, with the historic structure. Sorry, Commissioner, I don't understand. Are, are you saying that the windows that are on the addition, so like on the bottom left that we're looking at here, need to be the same starting height or a similar size as the there's, original windows? There's there's a proportion thing that is is creating some difficulty. The the um, the windows on the historic structure in on historic structures of this type in general tend to have a, a vertical proportionality, and that one window is is kind of stubby. Now, one of the things is we're looking at it in pure elevation, and it's really like forty feet back off the street. So we need to think about that a little bit. I I suspect, but that. I mean, the, the easy solution from our perspective is to make those 2 windows the same height as the windows that are adjacent to them. But I'm not sure that it's necessary or, you know, whether I don't know what kind of a problem it causes you with interior or not. Well, that'll be a, a bathroom. So yeah, I think that would be really yeah. privacy. Well, then that, that's a problem. <laughs> well, there are other ways to solve the privacy issue. I'm, I'm not saying it's, it's a. It's bad as a problem that wouldn't get approved. It, it's just I'm looking at the elevations that just popped out to me as something just visually seemed off and, and Jay could speak it better since he's got the architecture language. What's interesting is that that frequently you would see windows being different at that location. Then I think you might have a better insight into that, but whether they're dining room windows that are almost clear stories or um, or stairwell windows that are that are going up that are almost square and set differently than than the historic windows. This one seems to be neither a little bit neither fish nor fowl. Um, those two windows on on that elevation. I their widths not being the same maybe as much of a. Pro I don't think they're the same. No, well, maybe they are. I guess they are. Yeah. There's something about that bottom window that that isn't more well, more so than the top. That's just not sitting right. I don't know why. Hello, Jay. It's, it's Jay's because the windows don't respect the mass. So, I, right now, the concern is it kind of deviates from the historical facade, front facade norm. It, it's uh, that it deviates um, in a way that that's it, it's, in a, it's that it deviates in a way that just doesn't seem terribly comfortable. It's not to say they, think, need, they need to be the same, but they're just there's something about them that that just. I think what it may be is if you look at the at the west mm -hmm. elevation, it's a oh, double hung double hung window. If you look at the perspective, it's just a single pane fixed window. And I think the fixed window option might be the one that Ooh, works better for me. Actually, looks yeah. smaller. Yeah. Yeah, that it. That's interesting. It's a smaller single pane back mm -hmm. there, and that that really does. It, I can make more sense of it like that. Sorry to put it that way. Yeah, I think that makes sense to us too, Tony. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, I'm not sure where the confusion happened there, making so many different changes here. Um, okay. Look at it this way, all of a sudden the one on the second floor doesn't bother me again because you're seeing it that far back. The, the first floor, the proportion of of the double hung feels like, if nothing else, it should be the same as same size as the one above it. Yeah. And you look at it in in this way, it could either, you know, it's like pick one, either make it the same as the one upstairs, or make it more like what you're seeing in the uh, in the perspective. Does that make sense? It does. I, I, I agree. 
And I only have two other comments. Um, one is just a, a caution. Uh, the wrought iron fence in that perspective going up to the name and property. Definitely going to make sure you got the uh, agreement from neighbor from the neighbor next door. Uh, that's they're going to put that fence across the property line. That's that's well, an existing fence. Good. Okay. Um, and then my my final comment, and I think it's more about the commission to get some feedback. Um, yeah, well, the awning over that side door. Speed. Yeah, Jay, you got to boost your speed, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> The, the awning over the door. Um, yeah, I think there'll probably be some conversation about that at the at the meeting. The width of that thing versus how it attaches to the structure. Um, it looks like it's pretty pretty bulky, and the the method to attach that to the primary structure is going to require some mm -hmm. significant um, holes, if you will. And we try not to it, do that. It also looks high to me. We were trying to honor the the trellis window that we have that's stained glass. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure that we can still preserve that feature of the yeah. home. You got you got to okay. be high enough to go over the transom. Mm -hmm. transom. And it's too wide. Yeah, I was going to say it, it. I think something about the width that looks. It would typically a bit be about as <laughs> wide as your top step. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think yeah, we were looking at it as wide as that. It's that's a it's a three sided. Uh, you know, you have that stoop which is smaller, and then there's a three three sided mm -hmm. uh, wrap, and just you know, trying to protect it as as best we can. I know that you know you get driving rain and and stuff that, but that was the thought behind that, and then also um, the location of where that existing light is at this point. Yep, yep. You're trying to get it over to the light and still maintain the uh, the symmetry. And I would say, if you look at, and maybe the, the option there is to to not have such a a I'll say a bulky um, structure there. I know a lot of folks have gone with with more of a fabric awning, and I, I've got one out front. I got a similar condition trying to protect that transom. Uh, and then the light fixture that's already there, and that allowed me not to have that big long support down the wall. So, I think just so I have some options on that. So fabric the, on the other thing. Go ahead, Mr. Hudson. Uh, so your you know uh, fabric type awning would be acceptable. I'm not sure if that's what my clients have, have thought about, but I, I, I just didn't know that. Those have been used. Oh, yes. There's lots of them across the village. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, the only stipulation we have there is you can bring that fabric down, have a little drop panel on the front, uh, but keep the sides open. Uh, is typically what we want to do. Okay. So that, that's one option. We're, I'm not saying that you can't use more of a wooden kind of option. It's just that's another idea to look at. The other thing that's been done, I, I think we've allowed it on a couple of historic structures, are the contemporary flat roofed awnings that that just can't leave her straight out from the structure. I think whether we've allowed that on historic buildings or not. I, I think when that's come up, when that's come up, it's been a question about how that attaches without causing a lot of damage to the existing mm -hmm. structure. Yeah, I mean, you've got to slide steel through. There's, I, there's no other way to do it. Doesn't gotta get solved now. Just something to look at when you come back next. I mean, this wood, wood overhang design is similar to what our neighbors have done. It's one reason we went that route, thinking it was consistent. So we can take a look at other options this, as well. I, I mean, this doesn't make me cra crazy once again because of the way you're gonna view it. Mm -hmm. uh, it totally in the file. I, I... <laughs> If that light is in the way, something that came up earlier and, and another application was location of lighting fixtures. If if you end up bringing that that awning closer in, and it covers up where the light needs to go, you could potentially think about putting a light in the in the awning itself, uh, as opposed to a wall mounted, um, which would be a more traditional place to put a a light fixture. Um, again, just throw ideas out there for you to consider. Mm -hmm. Now that's interesting. So, I mean, the current light fixture in place, I, I can't really speak to his age, but 
doesn't appear historic to me, but is there any issue around removing that fixture if we were to go that route? You, you could take it yes, out and put a concealed <laughs> fixture. It would give you a pool of light there with no problem. That's not an historic fixture. I mean, it's. I mean, it doesn't appear to be me, but. Like 1990s, the or 1980s, the point of lows. <laughs> All right. Any other feedback you're looking from us? No. And so I think we, we shared our site plan. Obviously, we have the raised patio in the back. So you've all seen that. But I understand where you're coming from from the north side and, and fire aid wall versus moving in a couple inches. So we'll take that into account as we, we work it and come back to the commission here. Good. Boy, I would take this as a huge win. Sorry, I, I, I'm just so impressed with how this has gone. Um, I know it's been frustrating at times, but. Oh, Mr. Panzer, I, I can definitely say that the time length has been the most frustrating part, but um, you know, we want to get there in the end, obviously. We want to raise our family down here like I was raised down here, so hopefully we can get there. All right, well, thank you for your time. Well, we appreciate we'll your time. time. Thank you, everyone. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. All right, commissioners, that's the, <laughs> the end of the agenda. Uh, one last ask is uh, nominees for uh, awards for the year. Uh, I got Jay's stop at Jay's uh, place that he mentioned. I'm going to start putting together a, a document to send around for folks to look at. So if you got anything else, send it my way this week, if you could. And is there a motion right. to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All right. 102 no degrees here. I'm going to the pool. Later. <laughs> no <laughs> objections. It passes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, See everyone. You. Hey, Anthony, stay on a yes. minute. Stay on a minute. Let me just give you a call. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Jacqueline, Jacqueline, thanks. Yes, thank thanks you. Thanks for hanging in here you. all this time. I appreciate uh, Nolan, you she too. She has the highest endurance. Yeah. <laughs> I remember going to fetch Cheryl at midnight when she was here. Oh, man. I'll bet she misses those days. <laughs> oh, she's standing here hovering over me saying how much she misses them. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. See you later. See you.